a playlist original. You want to get a drink? Yeah. Since last summer, Julie James hasn't had a decent relationship. And I want everything to be like it was. It just isn't. But someone still wants her. It's happening again. Someone's still watching her. He was in there. Someone's close enough to reach out and touch her. <laughs> Jennifer Love Hewitt. Come and get me! I'm right here! I still know what you did last summer. Where did R? All right, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Back to the Blockbuster with your hosts Gaius and Jackson. Our second anniversary episode of the day. Uh, we just finished Child's Play, which we both enthusiastically agreed on. That's right. And that, that and, now we're, <laughs> and now we're doing another one that we are not enthusiastically going to agree on, but it'll still be fun. Um, uh, we are covering It'll the twenty fifth twenty fifth anniversary of I still know what you did last summer, uh, but felt that I couldn't be done uh, without having who feels like an honorary co host at this point. He's been on Absolutely. so much, especially when <laughs> uh, the nineties are involved. Yeah, if it's the late nineties, you got to have uh, Mark J. Parker on uh, your podcast episode. So welcome, welcome back, back Mark. Mark J. Parker of the Release Date is- Rewind Podcast. So nice of you to have me back. I feel, I, I, and if I ever annoy you guys, please let me know. Because uh, as you nope, know, with really rewind. I I can only really do two episodes a month because I'm so busy with other stuff. If that, like I was like delayed this summer, so I was like I will not be able to get. I still know onto my show, Gaius Jackson. Are you going to talk about this? Do you want me on? You know. <laughs> yeah, that uh, so. yeah, it was. Uh, cool. I knew. I mean, I knew if we were if we were going to because you messaged me like, hey, are, are you going to do it? And I even told you, I was honest with you, I was like, I think it'll be fun, but I don't know if I want to subject Jackson to like having to watch it. <laughs> um, but November is looking kind of light. So it was like, yeah, we can, so we can fit, we can fit it episode. in. Uh, yeah, but and you um, know, thank, all... thank God for November horror movies. I just want to say that you know, like mm-hmm. you were just saying, Child's Play November, Nightmare on Elm Street's yeah. November. I still know, Ooh, so yeah. you know, for those of us Ooh. that need the horror all the time, thanks November. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, fair enough. And uh, we didn't. Uh, Mark uh, thankfully suggested that someone else come on and discuss the movie. And I guess uh, they actually have a fond place in their heart for it as well. But Mark, <laughs> <laughs> but Mark I'm going to let you, since you are you know an honorary co-host of this show, oh I'm going to let you. I'm going to let you introduce uh, who uh, the last guest is. Oh my oh gosh! Boy. Wow! Oh, I did not prepare. Oh my gosh! Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. Well, everybody, like drum roll, please. <laughs> okay, I'll just I, I I can wing it, right? Drum roll, please. First time guest on Back to the Blockbuster, Mike. I I don't even know if I know how to say your last name. Newquist. Yeah, that was perfect. Okay, okay great. Nice. Mike Newquist, everybody, cartoonist, actor, all around movie horror pop culture fan like us. Perfect. Anything else yes. you want to say, nice. Mike? Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, my my Instagram is Nuke Cartoons, N E W Q Cartoons. I do uh, all sorts of 90s uh, art or fan art and mainly horror movies. I just did Inktober, which is like a drawing every day of different horror movies. So come on by. Nice. Check out my stuff. Sweet. It's it's awesome. Great. I'm going to read that well. right now. And we will uh, for sure uh, link your stuff under the description for this episode so other people Absolutely. can check it out as well. Uh, well, thank uh, you. Uh, so, you know, even though um, I have feelings about this movie, too, I was still excited for the potential discussion about it because even the not so perfect movies are fun to break down. And oh, talk yeah. about. Mm-hmm. Um, which is why, you know, even though for a while I was on the fence about doing one for this movie, there are a few reasons why I want to go with, it, of course, Mark, you're a big one of them. I was like, if we do this, he's going to be on it for sure. Thank this you. is like your wheelhouse. And, and I made my f- short fan film, which came oh. out earlier this year. I plugged it yes, on your yes. show before, but if yeah. anyone wants to check out, I think a pretty decent, um, you know, it's won a, oh, it's won a couple of awards. Not gonna lie, oh. um, your last <laughs> summer, Congrats. and there is there is a thank you. There is a little nod to I still know in my fan <clears throat> film, although it's sort of like a little like little joke, you know, because this movie, <laughs> you know, you can't take seriously. It can't be actually nope. part of like future sequels, <laughs> right? So right. Nope. Um, and another uh, reason for doing it, I mean, we, Mark and I actually covered on this show, we did the 25th anniversary for, I know you did last summer, uh, last oh. year. So I, was, so I was like, we should have a proper sequel to that episode. So I'm back for more. That, that, that makes sense. Uh, so are, are you, are you Jennifer Love Hewitt or am I, are you Freddie Prince Jr.? Who do you want to be? <laughs> uh, 
Well, I mean, if, if I'm Freddie Prince Jr., that means I'm in a totally different movie from the rest of the cast. <laughs> and, and <laughs> not like, so, yeah, that was something that, that was hard for me to get my head around yeah, while watching not, this. Not involved in any of the fun, and I don't really know why. Maybe you guys can speculate as to why. Um, but right, it's yeah. almost like was he like not available for a full shoot, or like like how <laughs> ah, many days you do go. you think he he probably well, my, was on it for like specu- a week? My speculation right. was because she's all that came out a few months later, not too mm-hmm. long after this. I was like, I was like, maybe he was shooting that. Maybe but I, our our you know Hollywood just doesn't like Ray because they didn't really like him in that first movie either. They, he gets kind of like Oof. sidelined a bit in the first movie yep. too. But yep. um, but yeah, that it all came down to I think it'll be really fun to talk about, even though the movie is quite uh, <laughs> the experience <laughs> and not uh, all that great. <laughs> um, but yeah, as you guys know, hey. as you guys know, hey, hey, I like I said offline, I got it on 4K. I actually watched yeah. it a second time for this. Uh, yeah. so I've watched it two times recently in very quick succession, and that hasn't happened in a long time. And it, I wasn't bored. I yeah. think it's fun. I think it's a fun movie. It's got a lot of plot holes and a lot of script <laughs> issues and a lot of it doesn't. He's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and uh, a lot, a lot of it doesn't make a lick of sense. But it's still, at the end of the day, pretty fun. And I think compared mm-hmm. to the first one, which is more, it leans more in the like murder mystery aspect of it. I think the sequel just went full slasher movie mode and mm-hmm. kind of wears that on its sleeve. And I can respect that now. I did not respect it when I first saw it in oh, 1998. Yeah. Um, no, that 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 was a you know we always talked to Jackson about like hey like these movies were so cool to see in theaters uh, back then and like with Urban Legend like really good I thought HBO was yeah. good at the time when when I saw this movie with my friends on opening night by the time it was over we all had the collective thought of like that was like the first bad one of these this was not <laughs> good <laughs> right, um, wow. <laughs> especially compared to that first movie so but I have grown in the years since to appreciate it for what it is yeah and uh, it's a dumb you know that i have not had the chance to do yet <laughs> maybe that That's will very happen in the future if i go around to seeing this again but then again like i don't think i really was like in the greatest position to have watched this i haven't seen the first one in a very very long time if not oh ever my i think it was Wait. one of those ones that seen like definitely not anytime recently like that would be worthwhile like oh, you know? so like Jackson. and I just didn't find the time to squeeze it in before this which is really a disservice to myself but I think well now you I would have hated out this of order more. you can yeah just, I guess so yeah oh that's, you, I, you I, know, I, I think book you, actually a long time ago in middle school oh yeah mm-hmm. yeah I think I think, you, I think you might have hated I still know if you had watched I know right before oh well, yeah <laughs> and that is the case but I think this would I think. At being a huge fan of the first would make me dislike this one even more. So I'm curious as to what it is about it that, that you guys are so drawn to that you right, enjoy right, it because I feel like, <laughs> yeah, I'm just very we'll upset of that part of the conversation. All right, all right. Oh, so I'm going to just, just like for people that uh, don't know uh, much about the movie, uh, it is a sequel to I Know You Did Last Summer, directed by Danny Cannon and written by Trey Calloway. Sorry, it's Jennifer Love Hewitt, Freddie Prince Jr., uh, Muse Watson, Brandy. Uh, Mackay Pfeiffer and Matthew Settle, uh, of course, is the second installment in the I Know You Did Last Summer franchise and taking place one year after the events of I Know You Did Last Summer. Um, it received largely negative reviews from critics. And uh, yeah, while it did while it did make a decent amount of money, it made like significantly less than uh, the first film. Yeah, um, which I'm always yeah. curious when that happens because the first one was so huge. We talked about it a year ago, Gaius, right? Like three number yeah. one weekends in a row made a bunch Bro, of money. Yeah. So it's like, you know, whenever like a sequel opens in its first weekend, not so well as the first one, I'm always like, oh, wait, did people not well, actually end up liking the first movie? They went to go see it. They paid for it. But did they not love it? Or is it just word of mouth about the sequel? I guess it's a mix of all things. I think, I, I think it might be a mix of all things. Like, I mean, I think the first one benefited from it being the second movie of its kind after Scream. So it was very much all like pretty like they were becoming popular again. And like we talked about it on that episode last year, you know, at least for the two girls, they were it was like a really big time for Sam Michelle Geller and Jennifer Love Hewitt. Like they were yeah. on two hit shows uh when this movie when that movie came out. Mm-hmm. And it, and then by the time we get to I still know. We did last summer. We had a lot of these movies uh, at this point that had come out. I mean, Urban Legend opened in September of '98. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Uh, and that wasn't and number then, one. That didn't do yeah, like, hugely well. Huge, you know? Yeah, it did. Yeah. It did yeah. relative to budget. It did well, but it wasn't a mm-hmm. huge, huge hit. And then yeah. H2O did well, but you know, like, and then you know, we also had discern behavior. There were a lot of these mm-hmm. that came out by the time I still know it comes out. And I think, I think you even feel that again that following month when the faculty doesn't do as well as they thought it would. I think it was oh, yeah. already, already within like what well, screen was ninety six. So this is ninety eight within the two year span it was starting to wane already <laughs> yeah. a little bit not for me though it, i was like you, not know, well. right? <laughs> you want it more um so mike this is your first time on the show i wanted to we always ask people their first experience with the movie uh, when you first saw it what you what you what you thought of it then and uh and then like a little cliff notes version of uh, do you think it still holds up now oh <clears throat> let's see here first of all thank you for having me Second, no problem. well, not second. I mean, the list is long. Um, but no, I, I, I think uh, I, I remember where I, I don't remember how old I was. It was definitely when it was on VHS when I first watched it in my friend's basement. It was like a sleepover night. It was just me, my friend Adam, and then this kid that I'm not, I wasn't friends with, Nathan, who hates brandy. So he was enjoying <laughs> uh, uh, a good amount of that movie. <laughs> Well, anytime something bad happened in the, her in the movie, he'd be like, "Yes," and I'm like, "Well, I don't know." But um, <laughs> she was like a pop star at the time. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and a TV star. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, that year was the same year uh, the boys' mind came out. Absolutely. For a song with, yeah, uh, it was a Monica. big year for Brandy. Yeah. And then and, the, and uh, Mackay the, Pfeiffer was in the video. Was the music and it was in the yes. video. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, so uh-huh. big deal. But um, you know, I remember because I had seen that movie. I'd only seen clips of I Know You Did last summer on TV, and it was just because I think you know, 1998. Wow. I was born 1987, so I, I, I or yep. I'm not old. So it, it, I wasn't <laughs> old enough to like wa- you know watch him yet. Like my wow. I had very strict, very strict yeah. parents uh, with the, uh, <laughs> checking what VHSs were in our cassette. But um, yeah. <laughs> I just remember being very scared of it. And uh, then watching the original afterwards and kind of loving, I still know a lot more than the first one. Ah. There, you know, you know, there are, there are some people I like, I look today, like on anniversaries, I love to see what people think of these movies now. Yeah. And there were a lot of people that some were saying that they loved it more than the first one. Now they always have these like caveats, like, yeah, I know it's not good, but it's like <laughs> more fun. Right. They're like, but it's more fun. And like, they have like their reasons for, accepting I mean, it and liking it so i mean that's i think that's cool the movie's called i still know what you did last summer so i don't i'm not going in thinking it's going to be like signs <laughs> of the lambs or like you know <laughs> like what would the si- like instead of red dragon it'd be like what i i still silence the lambs so like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I still I, silenced I, yeah. <laughs> but um but no you know i grew up as like a friday 13th fan um, and like collecting all those tapes and everything. So, like, uh, and so I'm just used to like having the big bad that chases everyone. And so mm-hmm. I think, you know, that's why I really liked about I Still Know initially. And then, you know, I like the characters. Uh, I think Jack Black is so stupid funny. <laughs> oh, um, my God. He is a scene stealer. <laughs> yes, say. he is. He's not even credited <laughs> in it, you know? Like, I know. I think, yeah. Yeah. And like, I had uh, seen the imagery of, of Jack Black with like the dreadlocks before and had no idea where that had come from. So you can imagine my surprise seeing him on screen in this movie with dreadlocks being like, wow, this is a very... Yeah, right? uh, he is so committed <laughs> and so like your your eyes can't not... Your eyes can't ignore him, but he truly is so pointless. There is no need for him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so many, but like, so are know, so many, yeah. You know, I don't under, you know, I, I really do. Lo- I've always liked this movie, but I never understood why people hate it so much. I, I you yeah. know, because I didn't think it was as bad <laughs> as like, you know, like Cry Wolf or oh, I don't God, know, yeah. like I I agree. searching for names. But, you know, like, oh, yeah, it, there are way worse. Even like Darkness the Prom Falls. Night remake. Dark yeah, Prom Night remake. Yeah. You know, and it's like I still know it's like a classic slasher. Like, like, mm-hmm. sure, there are plot holes galore, but like what are you what are you expecting from it like it's not yeah. it's not so you kind of have to like adjust your brain just a little bit to enjoy oh, yeah. it so. to enjoy it. it's true so i have a buddy that uh he would have been on this if he wasn't out of town he likes the movie a lot like he loves it and when i implied that it's not a good movie what he threw in my face was like but you can watch like friday the 13th part three or four and like then that's enjoyable like that's stupid right. too and i was like right. i was like touche that's that's very fair so like i guess you have to be a little less pretentious when it comes to like movies like this that are 
made for a specific purpose. But I, mm -hmm. but I get reason. it. I mean, it's coming right after like the whole scream, you know, phenomenon, and so it's right. always going to be compared to like you know the bar that's already been set up super high. Um, yeah. But you know, I think with this movie, there's just so much like I guess it's I guess you can call it camp, but like it's it's so lovable, and like I think just because everyone tries really hard. But I think I think that what yeah. what I I like most about this movie when I watched it earlier today is this is a really good final girl movie because Julie mm. I in my opinion and what I don't like about I know you did last summer is like her character is just kind of like a waif like like yeah you she know, like, a lot of stuff just happens to her and she reacts and yeah and Sarah and Michelle Gellar is yeah, more yeah. of like the the character you're kind of I don't want to say rooting, rooting for well, you're rooting for her but like yeah when it gets, she's but definitely like, more uh motivated right in, in right. the second one she's that, more yes. uh once she picks yeah. up the axe you know <laughs> yeah, I'm all white you know like it's, yeah. just, it's great. <laughs> and she gets she gets to do like you know she gets Carla through like the tiny little door window she, oh uh, my gosh that mm. window is so Tatum oh my gosh yeah <laughs> like, or like when she's when Will Benson is like um carrying her in the and the, to the graveyard and she has her knife and like you know cuts his like uh his right. arm and stuff like that you know like you know it's she's she's had enough <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's done <laughs> yeah and so i just and like just compared to a lot of like other final girls and like the sequels and stuff like that like you know she's just like she's ready to take care take care of it and uh you know and she does she shoots him like 20 times at the end so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just mission yeah. fucking die yeah. Yeah. yeah which is a great moment in the movie yes. i'll give it that and a great line yeah yeah, yeah. moment in cinema. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what about you, Mark? I mean, I'm assuming you were a theater, saw in movie theaters. Oh yeah, so I, so I am the same age as Mike. I'm, I, I was in eighty. I was born in eighty seven as well. So I, my dad was like a big horror fan, still is. We, ju I just showed my parents Hereditary over the weekend when I was visiting. Nice. Was <laughs> what, what did they think about that? Um, as soon as it <laughs> ended, this was like my third or fourth time watching it. As soon as it ended, they both were like, okay, explain it. And so my yeah, husband and I okay. are trying to explain it within seconds. They're looking at their phone saying, you know what? I'm going to go to bed. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't <laughs> know if they, they loved not? it. Oh my God. Really? I don't know it's if so they good. loved it, but they were never bored. Right. But so <laughs> I saw the first film right after school. I think I told you this guy is last year, yeah. right after school with my dad. And he snuck in the, the, the VHS the recorder, <laughs> recorder because yeah. I was that kid that said, dad, <laughs> I want to watch this like again tonight. I don't think he did that for, I still know, but we went open. Opening night and it was like a family affair i'm pretty sure it was me my dad yeah. and my mom this time and much like scream 2 opening night i sat right in between them in a packed theater um i remember i'm a little younger than you gaius i think i was around like uh, fifth or sixth grade so um i was still pretty young and i kind of knew in my young little brain like okay this isn't as um solid as the first one but i was on the edge of my seat i mean in in a way you have to give this movie credit guys right it's a great slasher sequel more yeah. of a body count new location we got more like sexy time sexy bodies right like it kind of <laughs> is hitting all those like 80s check I can marks agree that with that yeah that the scream films at least up until this time were like saying you know, this is that kind of movie that the Scream characters are talking about and of. loving, yeah. right? So that's also why I kind of loved it because it's like, you know, it all is one big happy family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like Mike was saying, I, I think Jennifer Love Hewitt, I, I think she's great in the first one. I do think her character doesn't get as much love as she probably wants. Sorry. But, you know, this this one, she is she's a force. She is a good final girl. Brandy's great. I think the acting overall is actually pretty solid i mean when you're it's given good. the script i th right yeah. i think they're all they really it. committed i think uh matthew settle what a new star i was like first right? of all i was like ooh, who is this guy in the pool wow <laughs> i mean i think i told you guys it's like ryan Phillippe in the first one was like my well, was your, sexual yeah, yeah. awakening yeah. so we didn't have anyone in the pool, <laughs> but we had a couple guys in the pool with brandy i was like wow i'm like really drawn to this scene um but i just think everyone was firing on all cylinders. Um, and here's my one quick thing about the first movie. I love that first movie to death. I've seen it more times than this one, but even the first movie isn't um, totally perfect. There's, it's always a little murky with like the backstory and this backstory, yeah. I'm sure we'll get into it's really, it. really murky. <laughs> Holy cow. It's like just sort of thrown out there and then there's no, no like deeper it's, conversation about like, 
Yeah. What? That's why I didn't really want when, when I made my fan film after making my Scream fan film. I was like, okay, I want. I now want to do an I know one, but I kind of can't touch. I still know because I don't even fully understand that backstory, <laughs> and that's gonna be a lot of like discussion with the new Unpack. characters. So I'm like, we're just gonna streamline it just you know legacy sequel back to the first one but yeah saw it in theaters had a really fun time and quick shout out to the computer game do well jackson you were you were an infant I do but this. the yeah. other <laughs> you other guys do you remember there was an awesome quite spooky for me little computer <laughs> game promotional game it wasn't i'm pretty sure it was like on the computer where i was like yeah. late at night and like it's storming and i think gayus do you remember um are we playing the fisherman or were we playing julie I think you you're remember? the fisherman. I think I, think, I have to go yeah. all the way back 25 years. <laughs> right? I know. It was a long time yeah. ago. Actually, someone I, I was talking to on though. Instagram, like, found it. And I guess someone, like, rebuilt it for, for like, modern computers. Um, but, yeah, it was a really fun promotional game. And it and it did kind of, like, creep me out with the, the thunder and lightning and all yeah. that stuff. So, yeah. I was full into it. So, that's me. Uh, it's funny that you mentioned Matthew Settle because I, I was when I was watching today I was like this guy is in this movie way more than Freddie Prince Jr. Oh, yeah. and they didn't even yeah. they didn't even make room for, they didn't even make room for him on the poster like he oh. could have like easily been on the poster right. with the rest of them I know and oh, like, wow <laughs> like, they no, really not did not want to have a fifth head they were like no we're gonna <laughs> yeah, we're <laughs> and like I I like studied these posters as a kid it's just funny how like all right let's just like swap Jennifer and Freddie from the first poster let's make it red then, instead of blue yeah. and for then me. Helen, but yeah no Helen Matthew. Mary gets switched out with like brandy and mckay mm-hmm. it's the same same poster basically but different colors and i yeah, had a hard yeah. time looking at not looking at the poster but like uh, t- telling the difference between uh matthew settle and Frey prince jr because in the poster mm-hmm. like just the photoshop or whatever it looks just it looks like just like a kind of like a basic white guy with brown hair <laughs> and like actually... <laughs> in the fight at the end of the movie when they're in, in the oh, rain yeah. and everything and they're basically wearing the same thing like a white or like a tank topper or a white shirt and then like a, a unbuttoned like whatever yeah. a flannel on top of it it's just like wait a minute are they yeah. are they also like <laughs> Is that, is that going to be another plot twist? The next movie? <laughs> right. Yeah. But, you know, uh, yeah, that, that is funny. Title. Yeah. But yeah, the, and I, then when he, that's funny. Then when he ends up on Gossip Girl, I was like, oh, that guy was nice. Still know you did last summer. I'm sure yeah. that's not something he would want to hear. <laughs> like, I, oh, you remember I mean, me from that goal? <laughs> I think his reveal, I, I don't know about you guys, Jackson, I'd love to hear what you thought of that reveal. <laughs> oh, and if you knew, because now knowing, you know, much like Urban Legend, like if you know the ending, it's actually a really fun rewatch to kind of see, <laughs> you know, oh, but how, like, like he, gaslighting I, <laughs> my mind, my like 10 year old mind, 11 year old mind, whatever, like seeing, you know, Jennifer Love, like looking for his wound and lifting up his shirt. And she's like, I can't find a wound. And he's like, it, it's because it's not my blood. It's not my blood, Julie. <gasps> like, I think it's great acting. Like, it makes me so badly want to play like a scene like that. And, you know, then he gets into his radio voice. Like, I th- I mean, I think he's really good in this movie for sure. Yeah, I will. I will say that everyone, because someone else mentioned this earlier, despite I, I'm sure when they read the script, I, they had to be like, oh, this is. Well, this is going to be something, but they take it seriously. And I actually think the acting isn't the problem. I think they sell what they had to sell very well. Like I agree. everyone involved, everyone involved in it. So I do I, remember I, the I, audience I laughing there. and you probably remember it too, guys laughing <laughs> for Ben's son. Yeah. 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 When they, I they was were laughing yeah, on my couch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that everyone laughed, but not in a good way. It was just really yeah. bad. That's um, <laughs> That the, that theatrical experience was really, I mean, because it wasn't, it was opening night, so it was pretty busy, but yeah. you felt the vibe after it was over that it, like, a lot mm. of people didn't like it. Like, it was mm. much different experience. And I and I had a different experience with it at the time, too, because I talked to you about this on, when we did the first movie, I was more of a Sarah Michelle Gellar Buffy guy over Jennifer Love Hewitt, mm. Party of Five. Yeah. So, like, I think I told you after, after. Uh, Helen dies in that first movie. I almost like mentally check out because like, well, it's like when it's just Man. like the stuff on the uh, the stuff on the boat with Julie and Ray. Like yeah, whatever. I don't care anymore. Yeah, well it's um, tough because Ray, <laughs> like you like you just said a moment ago, Gay. It's like Ray is kind of like only in the first movie for like two thirds of it, you know. So then it's like yeah, oh, like, these are the only two people left. It's like they realize yeah. he wasn't cool. Like when they cast him, they're like oh well, let's cut some of his scenes. I don't know what it was. Like, no, I, I, like, <laughs> I think if anything, they wanted it to be like scream, and they wanted us. I mean, I remember as a kid, oh, I think it was him. I think he. He's right, up to something, it. yeah, you yeah. know. And then they try to do that a few times in this movie with all the different hotel staff. It's like, yeah, like, I know, you know, Estes with the voodoo and the hotel <laughs> manager is a bit, you know, like, is it yeah. Yeah. Ooh, where's Nancy? You know, <laughs> yeah. like, 
I was thinking like, ooh, you know, when, at, at first rewatching it, I, of course, which is so funny because I talk about it in my film. Like, I forgot that the whole point of this is, you know, he his daughter, Susie Willis, died off camera, you know, before the events the of first, the last one. The so movie, when yeah. like Estes is telling them like, yeah, he had a son and a daughter. I'm like, oh. <gasps> That's mm. right, Nancy. I'm yeah. like, oh wait, no, not, not as daughter at all. No, no, no. But you yeah. know, the mystery works. I think it does. And also, what I will say upon rewatches, I actually, like you guys all said earlier, I find myself respecting Julie James more as a final girl second time around. She's much better in this movie, I think, than she is in the first one. And that's because I think she's more proactive and uh, proactive. It, it doesn't just accept, you know, I mean, of course, she's going through a lot at the start of the movie. Like she is clearly triggered by everything that happened a year ago. <laughs> I mean, I mean that we have that whole opening scene uh, yeah. where she's confessing and then like, of course, mm. it's a dream, a nightmare. And she just wakes up screaming in the middle of class like, yeah, she's still pretty fucked up. But she's she, really it, screaming <laughs> a lot more in this one yeah she oh, screams yeah. a lot in this in one class, she earns her scream queen in class yeah. <laughs> you know i mean she's she probably has like at least like seven big screams you know yeah. whereas in the first movie it was a few you know so they they up that annie i do wonder like you know and i i remembered this well but rewatching it today now that i'm older i'm like man that shot of i mean jennifer love hewitt this was like she Peak was her. hot, hot she looks gorgeous yeah. hotter gorgeous than hell, movie. baby. Yeah. She is stunning. And she was stunning in the first one. But this one, beautiful, mm -hmm. right? And the way that camera just lingers and really slowly pans down her body when she's, you know, getting into the, the, the tanning bed. The tanning bed. Like, tanning bed. I just, I'm like, oh, Jennifer, I, like. I hope, I hope, I know. <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it, I mean, it's like, yeah, you, you are in a, amazing shape. Show it off. But I'm like, I hope. You were cool with that because you were so young, and this camera. She was like, you know, like was she like nineteen, uh, nineteen. That's it, eh? Holy. Yeah, she was oh, young. Yeah. She was super young when she made it. Yeah, and yeah, she yeah, was because in the first yeah. one she was like newly eighteen. And she, yeah, and, yeah she was like the youngest person in the cast, I think, when, when yeah, they did okay. the first one. I, know. Um, I, know. I, just I agree. Hope, you know, I mean, she was, and I remember that being a topic of conversation when the movie came out of how they like the camera just lingers on her body and then just kind of puts her in outfits that you know, of course, it's raining throughout the. Oh, climax of the movie right. Get her in the white in the, shirt. Like, in the white shirt yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah she's on the um, mount rushmore of white shirt final and, girls but yeah. i kind of feel like i kind of feel like because it's interesting because they make fun of this on the behind the scenes stuff for can't hardly wait where donald Faison is talking about like they all loved her but they were like man that top she wears in the movie they had to know <laughs> like what they were doing and i just wonder wow. if like if she was in on that too or like i don't know right but that yeah. was like a big co topic of conversation when the movie came out uh yeah that, that I mean, maybe she, they were she's a total yeah. babe and hot as hell when she's laying down in the tanning bed so it's like the camera yeah. could have just done something differently where maybe we're not slowly closely looking at boobs stomach crotch feet it's just like yeah. Yeah. i don't know rewatching that i'm like mm -hmm. ooh, I, that, that the, actually <laughs> cheapens the movie a bit for sure. i actually like wrote that i wrote it down i was i was watching it uh and it's when they show up to the hotel and I, it's not it's protect like a you know very like elaborate shot of her but i was like looking at it and i was like actually wrote down like she looks really gorgeous in this movie like, i think that is like her peak at i mean that's what she looks great in it mm -hmm. and, and you know uh, i had forgotten i'll say real quick that like the beginning obviously i had seen this movie a bunch of times but like this latest rewatch i kind of didn't want to go on vacation i kind of wanted to like <laughs> you stay in like <laughs> although although i'll be i mean like uh, here in southern maine i'm sure in chicago like it's already so cold so I, it was very yeah. nice to see these palm trees and i'm like ooh, i'm into this but no like i actually kind of had a new appreciation for the beginning of the film it's never really clear i think they're supposed to be in boston is that or am i it making looks that like, up? Yeah. It looks right it looks she says up here, you know, so we're just like yeah. thinking, okay, New England, maybe, maybe New Jersey. I don't know, you know, but like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like I, I um, think they actually do a good job and Jennifer Love as well, like with the trauma of the first film and showing oh, yeah. her like, you know, and, and Ray just showing up again, kind of mysterious. He's just like mm. there by her gate, you know, and he wants to go to Southport. I kind of forgot about that whole beginning because the last time I saw this was five years ago for its 20th. Mm. Totally went over my head even then. And I think they do a good job with like showing because, you know, love the Scream sequel so much. But sometimes like in two, you know, Sydney's kind of like so set 
that it's like, yeah, like she's, like she's, like she's okay. Like she's like, yeah. Right. yeah. And it's kind of interesting. And I, I really appreciate like, you know, she's looking at the photo of Helen, you know, and really mm. lingering on it. And I was today years old realizing, oh, that's Hoover Phonic, the same band that has that song. in the first one, I did not yeah. realize. I didn't yeah. know that. I'd love that song. And then I realized today someone played it. I'm like, oh my God, that's like Helen's unofficial like band, you Game. know? Game. So yeah. yeah, so that's just my little shout out. Like I think I appreciate because very few slasher sequels does do the returning characters actually get to kind of like still grieve. And I feel yeah, like yeah. we get that in a, in a good way, in a good amount. Oh, as a, as a tween, I was, I just remember her grabbing the frame being like, oh my God, like, you know, the excitement of Sarah Michelle Gellar still in the movie. But Made like, it um, somehow. <laughs> I will say, uh, regarding like the trauma, what they at least attempt in this movie, I, I can't say if it's good or bad, but something that I uh, re, uh, saw this rewatch is um, three different times in this movie, you wake up with Julie. And um, the first time is when she uh, is, uh, you know, grabs, has her chips in bed and like looks at the picture of Helen and then she's paranoid immediately as she wakes up. Right. And then the right. next time she uh, wakes up, oh, God damn it, now I don't, uh, uh, is, is, is. <sighs> I think, is it in the hotel or is it sooner? There's a, there's one sooner than that, but there is the third one from the was... hotel. And there, she's immediately, you know, it goes off that, like, she's immediately going to, like, whatever the scare may be or, like, wherever the, the paranoia part of it is. Oh, I forget the second one. Now I'm mad. But, like, um, I'm not actually mad. Maybe I'm mad. Are you thinking but, the, the very, the <laughs> opening in class? That's one of them. Uh, I get, well, I, well, we'll put that one there just, just as a placeholder. But, yes, yeah. yeah. And and so it, it just became, like, a, to me, it's just like, oh, we have a we have an attempt of a theme here. Uh, so yeah, an <laughs> It wasn't a stunt. There's a lot of things. Effort. 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 No, effort. 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 There's a theme of of her waking up from nightmares, and there's a theme of Brandy falling through so much glass. I had forgotten. <laughs> yes. She has, or not even just like the mirror, and then the greenhouse, and then he's even throwing her through the glass shelves. I'm like, wow, I forgot, and she does not have many scratches on her. Okay, no, Carla. she doesn't. She doesn't. She doesn't. Um, right? Before she's we get into more, oh, before we get into oh, more specifics, real, okay. so sorry. She oh, wakes up ahead. after the club scene. After the club scene, she wakes up. Oh, that's yeah, yeah. when oh, the true. shoes are in the um in the dryer and car in, in the dryer. Yeah, she's, she's all mad. Thing. She's all mad, like because she yeah. <laughs> we good. Uh, before I get into more, more specifics about about the movie, I have to get Jackson's cliff notes. Um, oh goodness! Yes. <laughs> here I am, here I am thinking I was gonna get out unscathed. Oh no! no. no. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh no! Tell us the truth. Yeah, I guess I'll be. It's a little... your big death scene, Jackson. <laughs> My time to shine, huh? Okay, well, yeah, definitely. I can't say I'm really a fan. I kind of anticipated this going I, I into it. I told you going in. <laughs> yeah, uh, I really should have. And like this is something I had done when we were covering Halloween four. I made sure to get Halloween two in for the sake of oh. so I could fully anticipate and appreciate this movie. I really wish I had gotten in the first one. So kind of kicking myself for that. Uh, I don't think it really would have helped me enjoy this one more. I'm I guess I'm I'll never really know. Um, but yeah, no, I oh, didn't find a whole lot. That's a good to title claim. for a future sequel. I'll never really know. I'll never really know. Really, I'll I'll never never really know. know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, just more so here along for the ride to see maybe what it is that is so appreciated about this movie. Um, because I'm clearly not picking up on it. But then again, I don't have like the nostalgia behind this watch. It was, today was my first time ever seeing it. So. When did you first start hating it? <laughs> what scene? Do you remember? That's, that's a good question. <laughs> that is a good that question. That was a great. <laughs> I also wasn't very like I wasn't a very disciplined movie watcher when I was watching it because I had literally went right from child's play to this. I'm a little bit tired, and I was like, oh, wow. I know what I'm getting into here, so I was a little bit more liberal with like my phone watching. Um, but <laughs> it wasn't very long, and it wasn't oh. very far. I was like, oh, okay, this is how it's going to be. I mean, I spoiled a couple of things for myself before even getting into it just by looking at the imdb page i oh. knew what score this movie had been awarded and kind of <laughs> prepped myself so i guess i didn't really take it that seriously while watching it anyway so i don't feel one way like very strongly about my hatred for it because i don't have that personal connection to it but i'm curious because it, it seemed like for a movie like this the first one that is so well loved even all these years later i feel like a sequel that strays so far from the first one i'm surprised that it has such a positive reception amongst some of the fans so that i find is very interesting 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's it. Uh, there will probably be some other points I'll I'll touch on as we go too, but I'll probably need to be refreshed as well yeah. throughout the conversation well, on I mean, some things. That is a that is a good question. I can throw it to both <clears throat> of you guys. What do you think it is about this one that over time people have seemed to find an appreciation for it? Because I don't think that's what I don't think it's what's really the case when it came out. I think that it, it was you know it was immediate that I was like oh this isn't as good as that first movie but i could definitely see that it changed you know in the years since then and i what do you guys think it is mike you want to start um i guess for for my own uh viewing you know i really like the characters a lot um uh i i really love jennifer esposito in this mm -hmm. as nancy the <laughs> i always forget that she's in it too <laughs> right and like you know her like without even much you already kind of get a sense of who she is because you know they're like oh i smell man trouble and she's like no i shot him you know like, yeah, shot him. like yeah. Oh, yeah. i love when she slowly like, turns around and says that's none of your fucking yeah. business okay. oh when like, he's like why are you still here <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um i love that it rains the entire movie <laughs> not a lot of horror, like I know that's like a, a very small subgenre of like horror movies where it rains the rain entire time. Like and that. how funny we got this right after Urban Legend, which had a ton of rain. Oh, yeah. Ton of like rain yeah. Third act, yeah. Identity yeah. has a ton of rain. Ooh. Like I, I love, I love that, and you know, I'm sure the actors all hate it. But like, so yeah. there, there's that. Um, I thought the the chase scenes are so like from when um, uh, Brandy falls through the glass into the greenhouse, and then that until like. You know, yeah. the finale it's like non-stop like action and and just fun and yeah. so and i will say in the editing of the movie they end every scene with just like a, a kind of like a a lot of energy whether it's like a mm. huge soundtrack bop or like that evan and jaren song when they're flying <laughs> when, when they're, they're in the plane and like to oh. the bahamas you know like <laughs> i love <laughs> i love that cutaway you know yeah. brandy's also so good at just like finding a place to be like come on julie ah! and then it cuts away <laughs> like I, I love it you yeah. know and then there's like some of the small stuff like like okay like the voodoo because every horror movie in the 90s kind of has like a voodoo kind of moment <laughs> and no one knows quite how to you know describe oh, the voodoo, but like <laughs> right but like you know it didn't you know because i was so young watching it like you know i'm not collecting everything uh, besides like you know the death scenes and stuff but like like okay like carla she should have died like 20 times but it's like <laughs> no he burned her hair tie so she's gonna so like no matter what life. she's gonna live and then she he also burned julie's toothbrush so you realize she's running around the whole movie without brushing her teeth and she has probably just like bad breath <laughs> you know it's true and so uh, there's just so much like and i think with a lot of people not liking the movie like i love to and i do this with like anaconda or like you know maybe oh deep blue sea like where mm -hmm. it's just like they give me like some stupid or not some stupid anyone's a, entitled to their opinion but like some like this is what's bad about the movie and i'm like well actually you know there is a time in the bahamas where you can't really travel there i guess it, it may last <laughs> just a weekend <laughs> the oh, entire staff is dogs storm season it's people. a few months long i've worked yeah. at restaurants when there's only been like three of us there like it's okay yeah. you know? it's a still fine working machine um, so that's you know? so funny that is what like some of my friends picked apart the most i remember that being seen when we first saw it in theaters they were like where can you go where there's like there's like no hotel staff like that i'm like uh i mean I don't know. We haven't traveled much, man. We're like we're not that old, <laughs> like at the, at the time. So maybe there is. I don't know. Yeah, um, right. yeah. Uh, I had well, forgotten that as soon as they arrive, the housekeeper literally ignores Julie and just ignore, walks away. Her. It's like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she's already on her break. But yeah, um, and like, and I ne never caught like with uh, Nancy serving. She's like, uh, like, can I see some IDs or something like that? And she's like, just get it. You're, yeah. you're fine. It's like hell yeah. This is you know, there's only five of us here. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a lot more attempts at humor in the movie too than compared to the first one. The first one is not funny. Like, I mean, there's like, I mean, I guess there's no time for it to be funny because it's kind of serious from the jump. But yeah, this one seems yeah. like it seems like it tries to follow the scream motif a little bit, where like there's like a lot, there's lively. like a lot of a, a lot lively, a little bit forced humor. You have the unnecessary plot twist in the end because I guess like you already know it's gonna be Ben Willis, so that can't be a surprise. You have to have some surprise. Uh, mm. in the movie, and that yeah. is well where uh, Will Benson uh, comes in, mm. I guess. Uh, that felt very like, much like a scream thing, and then like an explanation as to why he's doing what he's doing to help his dad for something that, that was supposed to be so surprising. They didn't do a good job discovering or uh, hiding it by making his name 
Well, oh, I didn't Wilson, know it's like that. Or Will, Will Benson, Benson, rather. Yeah. <laughs> it caught I, me I off hard at first. I'm sorry. I, uh, Jackson, in 1998, <laughs> none of us knew. I no, mean, fair and, enough, yeah. <laughs> but we just knew him we up until oh, that point as Will, right? We yeah. right. knew, like, yeah. oh, that's Will from school. No <laughs> <Right>. last name <laughs> until now, you know. <laughs> And he um, does but, a good job of being like he's like too. He is really nice, right? But there's nothing about him that you suspect that he's gonna do right. something like he's gonna right. totally change. You he kind of like, seems honestly because we know that Freddie Prince Jr. is around. Will seems right. like he is gonna protect her and then totally like get the huck through him. You know, like or die. That's what yeah. I was expecting. You know, like right. he's gonna do something and like help get her off of something or you know, and then he'll die and she'll right. cry because she wasn't treating him so well. So. I I'm into the idea of a twist because also we know Ben Willis is old, so like you know, and he just went through some shit only the year prior, he, right? He, he doesn't have a hand. His hand. Yeah. yeah, you know, so like he, he needs a sidekick, right? Exactly, <laughs> right? But um, no gayest to go with your question and Jackson's question. I just also wanted to add because I agree with everything Mike's saying. Um, I think why this movie is aging kind of better than expected in my mind is it's fun we get to actually enjoy it the the first one don't get me wrong awesome it's almost like a, a modern horror masterpiece i think because it's a great setting and it's such a great mystery and it's super spooky but it's right off the bat it's full of guilt and we're dealing with guilt and it's heavy and like you said gaius there are some fun lines sarah michelle geller gets some you know and, and barry yeah, ryan philippe yeah. they get some yeah. fun sassy attitude -y lines but there aren't really like there's no moments of like just some like humor like great levity humor. like there's not a lot of levity in yes. the first one at all so i think what's nice is yeah in the real world i would hope if someone if any of us went through that massacre a year ago a year later we can you know crack a smile and our friend can make us laugh you know a little bit so i think it's nice to just embrace a fun thrill ride you know first one is like a mysterious thriller this one's just like a big crazy thriller you know yeah so I, I have to give it up i think in better hands i think this same story could have been done differently obviously in but when in better hands i think some of the holes yeah. could have been filled i actually would have loved re-watching re it today i was like wait i kind of wish sd's bill cobbs right when he meets them when they say when you know everyone's like oh our contest winners and and they say yeah we had to guess the capital of brazil rio baby i kind of wish right off the bat what was that yeah. 20 25 minutes in he's like wait that's not you know and right off the bat they're like wait we got in anyway yeah. you know like i wonder like what would that have been like it's like so why'd we get in here huh well i guess we just got lucky yeah it's yeah. and then they still could have said like well it's the end of the storm or it's the beginning of the storm season you know it's like nothing to do here so they just had free tickets to give away and we just fell for it oh well you know <sighs> not knowing that like no they're still like you were drawn here for a reason you know so i think you know i i had just recently heard that kevin williamson actually I thought he had always just said like no, but he actually would have was open to writing the sequel. He just got so busy with a lot of movies we've already discussed: Halloween, H2O, right. Faculty, Dawson's Creek, right? So yeah. it, it would have been very interesting what his idea Take on that would have been. Yeah, mm. you know. But um, yeah, I think I I yeah, appreciate I it because it's such fun. a surprise thriller, and I'm so glad Mike you brought up Deep Blue Sea because the way wait Jackson, have you seen Deep Blue Sea? No, I'm not. I know what you're talking about though, but oh. no, I have not. What am I it. talking about? Tell us. Wait, the oh, the shark movie. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, yeah. okay. I I, unless you're I, talking okay. about a particular scene, I know, but the, the Samuel Jackson death okay. scene I is iconic in that. Yeah. Okay, good. So you know that, but yeah, like that, I, I feel like Mekhi Pfeiffer's, you know, Ty's death scene when he's like, and I haven't seen no fucking killer is. Bit, like, I feel like <laughs> yes. Deep Blue Sea was a little inspired by this of like, you know, someone kind of like going on a rant. He's pissed off, and then it, you know, so. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's a good. Uh, right? By the way, on re on rewatch, I was just so happy when he died. I was just like, because he's like the most of the of the characters, the most annoying one. Yeah, and I just love how like unnecessarily angry he is at Julie. I mean, I know it's because he's like trying to get laid and it's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes. like, there's that it's that one line that's really funny the way he drops it though, when she's like. Yeah, everyone thinks I'm crazy. She's like, no one thinks you're crazy, Julie. And he just goes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> just like he's just so mad at her, like yeah. the entire time. It's just like that part is kind of funny, but he is kind of annoying. So when he does, like you said, when he does die, it is a surprise. I you don't see it coming the first time mm -hmm. you. But watch you're not it. sad. 
No, you're not sad about it. Yeah. And you know what? Even... I, if you're gonna if you're gonna kill off one of the the, the diversity hires, which is Brandy or Mackay Fiverr, <laughs> I would pick Mackay Fiverr over Brandy <laughs> if yeah. uh, that has happened. Like we talked about that before with like H2O, like you know, and all that stuff where they talked about like why oh, they wow. would cast like uh, you know, someone like someone either in hip hop R and B to be in these movies because they knew that African Americans love horror movies and they want to mm-hmm. see someone. That they find popular in them, and Brandy was incredibly popular when this movie uh, came out. Oh my she gosh, was on a huge. hit TV show. She had a huge shit, like you said, with the boy is mine uh, yeah. that year. I think it was like number one for like thirteen weeks when it came out. Yeah. That that song, like, so she was pretty huge, and it, yeah, she has a lot to do in the movie. I I actually yeah. find myself enjoying her more when I rewatch it. I think she's it. great. Like, I think her chasing her. her chasing is really her chasing is really good. Um, yes, she, I love. She's not, very good at acting out pain and all that stuff. And, yes, yeah, I think and and really fear when she's screaming, right? And when and when her foot is stuck in the ceiling. Ooh, yes. Oh, yeah. that, that's such yeah. a fun right. scene. I do love how Julie says when she gets a good look at the fisherman, he kind of like jumps into place and he looks at her and she goes. What does she say? You sick freak. Yeah, you sick I freak. Because freak. <laughs> you know. that's all Julia would say. She wouldn't say anything deeper than or like nastier than that. <laughs> right. I'm like, okay. But like, I, I do appreciate, you know, the trio of Julie, Carla, and Nancy. Because in that moment, I don't know. I was like, oh, Carla might get it right now with her foot stuck. But we still have Julie and Nancy, you know. So yeah. I like how they were kind of given us this like charlie's angels who's gonna actually die they all can't live we we know that mm-hmm. right so yeah. that was a fun sort of surprise nancy's a great sort of backdoor sidekick i think she's mm-hmm. got a yeah. really she's some good screen her. time yeah she's got lots of i i i she's a death i actually am sad by you know i think i don't think she needed to survive but like you know, she just dies because the bo- the guy's body just <laughs> falls on her. Falls on her. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. Sucks. Oh my yeah. god, that sucks, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I will say, like, the movie has some really fun set pieces, like the uh, like her, like I said, Carla's chase scene is really good. I don't know if it's as good as Helen's chasing, which is oh, no a, hi- a highlight of that first. But like, it is pretty well done, and like, it's probably some of the best stuff in the sequel. Is the you know, my like you said, only... when she falls through the skylight all the way through that whole thing is like really good. Yeah, I think it's great. I I just cuz I'm greedy, I I think it would have been awesome if maybe I mean, I love when she hops over the balcony and then he does that swipe and I remember that was in no, the yeah. commercials. And I was like, it's oh in the commercial. God, it, right? was in the, it was in the TV spot. It's so <laughs> visceral, but like I do kind of wish maybe she fell not into the room because also, let's just talk real quick. It is really strange and creepy that Julie's like, oh my god, that's my bedroom. It's like, yeah, why can <laughs> why like this is a messed up resort. That's yeah, so weird yeah. that we have a full view to of like the a, <laughs> you know, double sided mirror or whatever that's called. You know, yeah. like, that's weird. Um, but no, I think it could have been cool if actually she didn't fall into the bed- bedroom. Maybe she falls into another room and has to kind of hide in the hallway, like just show us a little bit more of a chase before mm. hopping onto the balcony, you know. I think then yeah people would remember it more because I feel like a lot of people don't really think of this chase uh, when they're thinking of best chases. You know, it's Helen, it's Gail and Scream 2, it's Prom Night. And I feel like Carla almost could have made that list if maybe there was just a little bit more running and hide and, and, you know, trying almost like American Psycho, trying different locked Mm -hmm. doors down the hallway. That could have been cool, you know, and and even like Gail uh, running and Scream 2, you know, down that hallway. So yeah, yeah I, I love it too. I think it's I think she gives it her all. And I'm actually really happy she lives. I think it's fun to have yeah. another not just so it's not so repetitive, just the the first two survive again. Now we do have a third person who's meant person to survive. that's yeah, I agree. You know. Um I wanted to ask you guys, um, because you, you met you brought up the Brasilia, uh, the whole like capital mm-hmm. of Brazil thing. Um, if you have like a basic knowledge of geography, that plot twist falls apart as soon as they uh throw it in there when she wins the radio contest. Um, I just want to know what you guys, I'll start with you, Jackson. What did you think of uh, that? And then actually, and then the reveal of it is supposed to be so shocking. Like when he comes out of the, the darkness and just says, Yo, Brasilia. <laughs> and right. <then> like, ah. <laughs> well, I honestly like, and I love geography. Didn't know the capital of Brazil. I would have guessed Rio de Janeiro. <laughs> so um, it had me fooled in that sense. Uh, although I knew where it was going. Um, I just kind of felt like it was like a cheap 
gimmick like this part of the plot like i thought it was a big red flag early in the film for me was when you take the cast and throw them on a tropical island like i didn't <laughs> like that whole aspect of the plot at all so getting there i thought was weird i also thought why is this your question on a trip to the bahamas why are you asking what the capital of brazil is it just felt like something that was like plucked from a hat during the i am process. glad you bring that up jackson good yeah. point because it's like wait they're going to the bahamas so what, what is this think the trivia question would be about the bahamas right? oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah it just yeah. felt loose and i guess that kind of or not like well fleshed out and i guess considering where that plot point and how that gets revealed to be like later down the line makes sense because it was all a ruse to begin with yeah. but yeah just yeah. not one of the stronger parts of the writing i thought but <laughs> it had me fooled i didn't really know the capital either so i was in on it i suppose or not in on it i suppose is that a right. fairly expensive ruse too i mean like how yeah, to, yeah. Like, 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 they have to get like plane intricate. tickets and stuff for all them, right? So like, how? Plane I mean, tickets. I too Why much. not just kill them? <laughs> Why yeah. go through all this crazy extravagant plot? To yeah. put them on a, an island yeah, in the Bahamas you know, wow. during the rainy season. I never thought about all the cost involved until right now. You guys bring up a really good point. <laughs> Very like, impractical. And, and then they yeah. had to make sure that Ray didn't go. I mean, that because like they they can't they have to guarantee that Ray be like. No, like I'm gonna say it's Southport. No, like no, right. and then, like they also, but then he wants to go surprise her, so I don't even know how the, that whole thing with Ray on the road what that doesn't make a lot of sense either. Right? No, yeah. <laughs> this is what I'm thinking while watching. Like, well, how does this make any sense? That might have been Jackson when you're like, yeah, this movie's dumb. <laughs> well, <laughs> perhaps. And I'm also looking at it too intently. Like, I don't think it really demands to be taken that seriously, which is probably a problem that I had. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Ray, how does he know where Ray's going to be? I mean, I, I, even, I don't know. Yeah, you know, desperate, I, and I was desperate need of texting in this movie. Like, you know, <laughs> or a simple Fair smartphone enough. to get the, ca the capital of Brazil. And Brazil, oh, yeah. Totally. <laughs> oh, my God. And then, you know what's so funny, Mike? I thought of that. when, they, Like, obviously, I've seen this before, but when they're, like, looking around the apartment, I'm like, oh my god like your computer i'm like well maybe they don't even have computers in their rooms like <laughs> laptops were a thing but like they're you know so it's so funny how we just totally take that for granted now like uh you know and they're like looking for like a book or julie finds it on a coffee coffee like, yeah yeah, coffee yeah she's like she's rio. just like rio rio oh, rio, rio. <laughs> you know um but no you bring up a good point guys about um the road scene i like that scene but yeah how did I almost kind of wish, we, you know, I don't know. It's hard because Ben Willis is there. Uh, actually, let me let me backtrack. So every time we see Ben Ben Willis in the beginning at the club, love the club. Also, oh, this yeah. soundtrack <laughs> is a, amazing. By, I, by the way, it's the, a very, the club, so good. The club scene soundtrack. is like a product of his time too, like the music. Oh, and oh man, oh, never. <laughs> but it's, there are but hundreds it's, of people at that club, and Carla takes a break. Like, oh, yeah, oh yeah, I know. And the manager is fine with it. Like, never so, you get you would get you get fired right away, Jackson. If you took a break, right. like oh, oh I imagine. Yeah, at out least my real quick. <laughs> at least show me like a an angry extra that's her manager looking around and she's like, okay, I, you know, like show you know. But it is. I'm so glad we brought that up because um during that whole awkward bar exchange where we meet Ty and she's like, Ty, you're gonna ask Julie to dance. Oh no, I'm good. You're gonna you're gonna dance. You know what? Why don't we all go dance? It's like dance. Wait, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we could have kind of cut some of those lines, but whatever. Um, but so do you guys that Ben Willis isn't actually there. We don't actually no, see I think Ben all at head. all no, until bad, yeah. right. Okay, I just wanted because you know it's up for interpretation. It's not super clear, right? But so that's all in her head. So the first time we see Ben is on the road with Ray and and John Hawks. Academy and which is so rad. Yes, uh, I know he's so good. Yeah. But he fits, honestly, he looks to me like he would live in Southport. He looks like a Southport yeah, fisherman way Ray more Catholic. than Ray does. Yeah. Ray, like, in the Ray first does not movie, look like a I see it. <laughs> Ray in this one, that she's all that, like, face and bottom. Like, no, that's a movie star pretending to be a fisherman. Okay. Um, you know, and I like that whole scene, and it's and it, it calls back to the beginning of the first film. You know, the car and the body in the road. And, again, like, good, like, kind of tense trauma there. Um, but I kind of wish, I, I just wonder, would a better sequel have been have have shown us that it's not ben willis it's actually um will oh, that well. you know and we know right off the bat will is bad you know and then we don't see ben until the until the bahamas like he's been at the bahamas where he has this backstory and he's waiting for them you know 
I, I I don't know if I buy that Ben Willis is like everywhere. He's like in Southport, and then like a couple hours <laughs> later, he's in the Bahamas. Right. I don't know. You know, I think that to to go to with what you're saying, Jackson, it's a little like this guy's kind of like everywhere. But where's the money and how? And yeah. you have a hook for a hand, like how yeah, you you're gonna see? stick out. <laughs> yeah. And I, and, uh-huh. I, and I get that it has to work in order for it to work. They have to Ray can't be included, right? Yeah. So because they because they need Will to go. But it's right. just like I just need a bigger explanation as to how he knew he'd be on that strip of Although, road. Although honestly, that's Ray, <laughs> honestly, there is a version in my mind where Ray does go, and it it's totally fine, and Will just shows up <laughs> because uh, Ray like surprises them and or or something, or like maybe he doesn't surprise them, but Will surprises them. He's like, oh wait, Carla and Ty told me about this trip. I got my like ticket. Like there could have been a version where Ray is with them the entire time. You know. Yeah, and it, it, could, it, would it could have worked. worked. I think if there was maybe more time to flesh out this script instead of just pump it out the next <laughs> yeah. year after the next success, year, <laughs> yeah, there yeah. could have been a lot of these rights wrong or wrongs righted, right? Or maybe you know some more flesh well, out. Meaty well, I was scripts. trying to remember. Do you guys remember? Like, because like I know this was the case with Saw Two and with some other sequels. Like, do you know? And I was trying to look before your recording, and I couldn't really find anything concrete. But I had this like memory that maybe I made up. Was the script originally like something else and entirely like like a different title? And they were like, let's just put I Know What You Did Last Summer and stamp it and like make this the sequel. Do you know if they like did that? I don't know, actually. Okay. Um, There's like a different story attached. Um, yeah. I Maybe I just like guessed that, some, that it's like, some, I have a feeling an executive was like, that's a good script. Let's just rename it that and <laughs> they just shoot it right now. Something else. Because <laughs> like, it happens like, sometimes. I you know? still yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that title, the title still doesn't <laughs> make sense, right? Am I the only well, one? Yeah, because because the actual event of them running him over was the summer before last, right? That right. Was so, and the events of them killing her friends was last summer. But I mean, I guess we yeah. could say that she, he, yeah, he does still know what you. I don't know. It's stupid. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a lot of a lot of like, movies. I, like, been, I still know what you did that summer. That summer. <laughs> that yeah. summer. That summer. Yeah. yeah. That probably would have uh, been better. Or it's like, I guess I still know what you did last summer works if we're talking not about the the hitting the body and throwing it in the water, thinking he's dead, but like thinking of like what we're talking about, just the yeah, the events of last summer, like it doesn't make sense. Yeah. I'm trying to make it make sense that it doesn't. Um speaking on sidelighting Ray, I want to mention this too, because I was like trying to gauge the whole relationship, potential relationship between Julie and Will. Was she like down to maybe be like, oh, I want to see what's up with this? Or was she still treating him as like a buddy? Because she clearly knew that the guy liked her. Like mm. it wasn't or like liked her. <laughs> um, but it seemed like, you know, because Ray was being all like, come back to this place where, you know, you had all this trauma. I'm fine. Uh, like right. <laughs> uh, that she seemed like she and then her best friends encouraging her to uh, to right. you know, st- step out on Ray. I don't know. I couldn't. Really I didn't get the vibe. vibe. Julie, I, I didn't was really to do. pick up on that. Do any of you guys think differently? I think there's like a brother sister kind of thing that the brother's hoping to swoop in to get the girl at some point. <laughs> but, like, like if she says yes. He's but down, I also think she's like up. you know they're also like 19 years old. Like you don't. Mm. You're, they're none of them are prepared for a mature relationship, right. especially not, right, not with that ring. But um, <laughs> oh my god, the ring! I forgot about that ring, and then she's yeah, wearing right. it at the end, and they have a house already. It's yeah. like, is this set like five years in the future, or is it just that, like? Do you think that's real? Do you think it's a dream? Or oh yeah, I fucking hope not. not. Oh man, no. <laughs> no so and, yo man, if I could have been in the room with Jackson during the last, you uh, movie. Di- oh. <laughs> I do love. I do. I have to tell you, I I mean, I love the ending of the first one, but I think I like this ending better. It is. <laughs> so creepy when that dumb teddy bear is wiggling and then <laughs> again we don't give jennifer love hewitt does not get enough credit no. she, her, she's like this and then she slowly realized like oh i'm getting the chills just right now thinking about it and then the, the mirror and the feet and the screen i mean that is a visceral ending that's how you end a fun slasher right okay. so, so you know what i did I didn't That's mind the, question. Sting- Is it a the dream? stinger oh. at the end of the first one because, like, I know right. they ended up they ended up adding that because, like, they want to end on like a, a kind of scary note. Well, well I guess uh, I guess apparently the end, the original end, was what they oh. used for a teaser for a bit, where she's at school yeah. and she gets an email, yeah. right? She gets an email, oh. yeah, yeah. And they yeah. were like, "That's like kind of," and That's it not- just sort of fades. 
and it's kind of dumb. So they're like, let's do, yeah. So yeah. like, mm-hmm. I didn't mind the stinger at the end of it because every time someone uses those things, they always compare. Like when y'all listen to the commentary in the first movie, they were like, oh, like you know, we kind of wanted like a carry kind of stinger. That's how they mm-hmm. wanted to like make it seem like. So I didn't mind it in the first movie. The second one, since everything was so dumb before it got to the end, <laughs> I was like, oh, didn't really didn't feel necessary. But I don't even know. Right. Like, it's a, it's a whole thing a dream. Maybe maybe they are married and she fell asleep and like. Maybe some of it is a dream and some of it's not, but uh, I don't know. What do you I think we need like, to if, see that to know for sure. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, if it's a dream, where does the dream start? Do they not live yeah. together Heather, in the yeah. house? Is that Did all? They... Maybe that's when the dream starts. Because it is also weird to see her drive home. We're, we're at the house. She taps the sign and then all of a sudden it's nighttime. So we're kind of like, like yeah. you know, so so maybe maybe all of that is a dream. And then apparently she dreams, originally... about, she dreams about Ray Goofy brush, brushing his teeth, too. Oh, like, my God. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Oh, no I love, oh, my God. I love this like, thing. Wow, okay. so Every, everyone on. needs to, everyone truly needs to find Mike on Instagram because I was hoping, because, because you know, and I, I'm talking for you, Mike. Feel free to talk about your work yourself if you'd like. But he does these awesome, you know, cartoons with a quote. And for Freddie Prince Jr.'s quote, it's, I love this thing. This thing. And <laughs> it's very even good. as a kid, I remember I was like, oh, what? Like, why did we ever say, yes, we sign off on that line. Yeah. Say it. Yeah. Action. That's yeah. what you need to do. Like, what? His, you know, his whole I, dialogue. just have a moment in this movie, for sure, between yeah, Julie's it, it, and Ray's. It's I mean, ad. brought to you by, I mean... <laughs> Cold all his di- all his dialogue in that scene is so bad. He was like, "Don't you dare go to sleep, girl." <laughs> like, that's how she dreams oh, about him. <laughs> yes, it's like, very like something Tyrell would say. So yeah, maybe it's all a dream. Ooh. Yeah, it must it must be because I know, and maybe you guys saw this too. Apparently, this movie I guess did well enough that there were plans to do a third one. I guess it was announced oh. a year later, or so and they were officially going to bring back Love and Freddie and Brandy. But then, like the script wasn't working out, and then they just shelved it, and then we got the crappy directed DVD know. that I've never seen. Know. I'm I'm too truly scared to watch it. I don't want to watch it. Um, but so <laughs> so I assume good. I assume right that well we all know you know that the 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 plan it feels very dreamlike that the plan of the end of this movie was that it's just another dream. But now that yeah. we kind of got the movies we got, you know, yeah, maybe well, it does, is does real. That, does that just show that she still hasn't? dealt with any of her trauma she's still dreaming about this stuff did I she mean, did, it, did she gain trauma. anything <laughs> from you know defeating her monster at the end that she's still dreaming about him and you know you just made me think uh gays and sorry if i'm talking too much my fr- my good friend who's been on my show the other day she is a I, I seem to have a good amount of friends who are very late to the horror genre like like decades after me and so she was texting me the other day saying all right i'm doing a whole binge on the i know movies i'm like wow i've never even seen the third one good luck and she's like i have to ask you a very important question and she's like why is ben targeting julie so much in in especially in one when it's like all four of them why is julie but but then it's like two it's like 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 freddie prince ray is also here he's still alive why are you not like terrorizing him more like at the hospital you know why are you focusing on julie in the bahamas you know and and i just i didn't really know what the answer to that was other than lois duncan just chose like in her original book which we know is very different than these movies it's not nearly so slashery right but like julie's the lead and she's the one getting the most torment my only reason for it is maybe in the very very beginning of the first one when they're dumping his body they you know he obviously was still alive we know and he's hearing julie like really kind of fighting her friends on this like no we have to go to the cops and the and you know barry's all up in her face and they're all telling her like no shut up that maybe ben's like man you were so close to doing the right thing but mm-hmm. you caved that so, so that, it makes it more bad <laughs> right is that why he's like i'm really gonna teach you specifically a lesson you know I think but then because, i just uh, oh go ahead sorry I was just, no, go for it. I was just going to say like, yeah. And then even in the sequel, like, oh my God, this he's terrorizing this girl. And meanwhile, Ray is all by himself, ready to be terrorized. What do you think, Mike? It's still in Southport. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I think there's, there's a lot of it. I think it's because, um, uh, Ray Ray apologized to, uh, to Anne Heche or the family in the first one, which is why he got the boat or whatever. Uh, I think that's what happened. Yeah. Billy Blue. Yeah. But but actually, like, uh, is that why he got the boat? I never realized that. I think he had Billy because, Blue. Yeah. Or, or, or he just it, he told her that was his name because of his boat, right? I think you know, so. 
we'll let the viewers decide. Right. But um, <laughs> but I do think like uh, a lot of like why it's solely Julia is because she she felt the guilt, but she never really did anything about it until mm-hmm. things started happening to her, and that you yes. know. I, she, had, she, had, like, Barry, she had Barry yelling at her though, man. Like <laughs> the entire wow. like, Barry was like borderline abusive to like all oh, of them. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I think yeah, particularly uh, her. <laughs> it, I think it's the the scary movie movie uh, perfectly like like made fun of that. Makes fun of that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and her, like oh, you don't you ever. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, um, so I also. Good. I also think giving Ben uh, the backstory that they gave him in this one, it seemed like they had to do that because so, so they it with S's line about like, you know, he had a wife and like a son and a daughter and then the wife went missing. So we are to assume that Ben Willis murdered his wife. Yeah. So I think they make him a much badder person in this because, you know, in the first movie, you're like, OK, like he killed the guy that was responsible for his daughter, you know, dying. So you can maybe sympathize with that. And then these kids just happen to run him over while he's on the way back from doing that. And then they dump his body. And then he'd probably be really upset that he, you know, was almost killed by these kids. So, but I think giving him a backstory where he was not a good person too uh, Mm -hmm. makes it kind of work better for the sequel where it's like, okay, like, well, he wasn't good to begin with. So there should be no sympathy for him, like, at all, like, whatsoever. It seems like that's why they kind of threw the... Did That's that an interesting him, point, Gaius. Yeah, I never really. Yeah, it it helps solidify that he is not just getting his revenge on Julian Ray, you know, for doing yeah. the wrong thing, but like he's just crazy. And but like I don't know, guys. That that backstory in this second one. <laughs> right, so so he, he killed his wife and abused her. And 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 Esty says they said she was cheating on him. Right. Yeah, yeah. So she cheats yeah. on him. He kills her. Like, okay. Why? The the why? <laughs> yeah. And then like her grave is there, and Susie's grave's there, and then next to them is Julie's, you know, open grave, which is pretty cool. Um, but right. like, yeah, like, I don't know. Did we need, like, back backstory? Did we need a new, uh, another le- another chapter of backstory or? Like, I don't know. Because, yeah, you bring up a good point, Gaius. Did we need something to to make us realize that he is just, he's been this madman for decades? It's, or, yeah. like, not? Because that is when I, my, I'm really like, why do we care about his wife? Yeah, I didn't care much for that plot introduction. I like it. I think the idea more of him just being out for revenge regardless i think his backstory could be ambiguous and it still works that's just my two cents having not really yeah. seen the first one i don't know if that changes things or what you guys think but no i mean it's, a, it's interesting in the first movie you do kind of like both parties do something wrong in the first movie i mean he he's clearly grieving the loss of his daughter which is why he kills the guy that off screen at the beginning uh mm-hmm. that we don't see and then you know these kids recklessly you know, run him over even though he was returning from committing a murder right. um they don't, know they, that, do the, they don't know that and they do the wrong thing by dumping his body and i do think it's funny that by the end of that first movie they have fully justified in their minds like well yeah he did something bad too though so mm. <laughs> i mean yeah. we're in he, he'd have yeah. to come back after us <laughs> like it's, i almost you know, feel it, like maybe he just worked there and lived there with his family when the kids were young and how cool would it actually have been and like this is my nerdy brain with like if you're gonna make a sequel that's so different than the first one okay let's try it right but like at least what if in julie and will's room in one of the honeymoon suites is like a picture on the wall of a cute little girl um at the resort from like i don't know the 70s or whatever and we realize like that's susie you know like Mm -hmm. like his daughter the death Mm. of his daughter and like how that all you know got so complicated all these years you know because that was that year and then then they hit him the year later and then you know Mm -hmm. like i just feel like we still need to hold on to the the chronology of like the grief and maybe that's what we need i don't really know about the mom but I think yeah. it's more about Susie. I think we need to like link it back to like what's the real reason for why he first killed mm. if he, if we ignore that he killed his wife. You know, he killed yeah. Susie's boyfriend because of grief and and revenge, you know, he got her killed in a car accident, right? So, yeah, yeah I don't know. I just wonder like I don't know if that's the family angle that we should have gotten, you know. 
Yeah. So. Also, the ruse gets even more complicated when you realize that Will has to end up going to college with Julie too, <laughs> uh, because they have to yeah. meet somehow. They have to meet somehow because uh, I don't know if Will's been in Southport. Did he go to high school there? I don't even know where he would have. He had to get into the yeah. school that Julie went to and then be friends. And it's mm-hmm. it falls apart once you think about it too much. <laughs> I, l- I love that mission stuff, like in school <laughs> with Mickey and maybe yes. this is oh, yeah. for uh, Will's admission as well. You know, yes, <laughs> yes. it's just a year. Yeah. <laughs> a, wow. You, a community college, so maybe it's not as much. Yeah, as it could have been a community university. college. It could be, I, I can't see Julie going to community college, though. I feel like it was like a real. <laughs> she was I feel like, like she got a good student, right? I feel like her mom smart. said, like, like, your grades. You know, your grades yeah, are so she, good. Her, life oh, no, but her, her grades are always bad, though. The first uh, year of college, she said failing, and then <laughs> yes. her mom is like oh, upset. Yeah. And then this movie, she's like, I'm barely passing. You know, I'm, like, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. Also, maybe this community college. Is. Maybe. <laughs> maybe she, yeah. Academic probation, regardless of where she's at. <laughs> where mm. she's going, yeah. But yeah, but yeah also. I I think you also just like you guys like this is what I love about like chatting about these movies that that have holes. I'll give it to you, Jackson. There are many holes. Um, but like, yeah, wouldn't it have also been interesting? And maybe this is a little too Scream Two with like, um, oh my gosh, Laurie Metcalf, my favorite ghost face, you know, and how no one knows it's her because of her change. What if Will Benson did go to high school? with julie oh with them yeah you know that and it's been, like yeah. oh my god will benson you know but maybe that's way too similar to like you look different you know you got yeah. buff or whatever you know <laughs> you <laughs> wear, your wear your glasses <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah he was just like an uber nerd and they just show a picture of him wearing glasses like oh he you looks have so no more pimples <laughs> you know um but that could have been interesting too where you know yeah he's he's not only will's strange out of nowhere son but like oh no he went to school with them like he's actually been around for a while just no one you know yeah. took him seriously right that would have maybe been something yeah but i think That's ultimately cool. what also doesn't work with the mom thing and sorry this is the last thing because i feel like i'm harping on the mom during like <laughs> i just feel like ben doesn't really get like a chance to kind of talk you know he <laughs> no. had a little bit of talk <laughs> not even you, a little bit no right? he had a little bit no more <laughs> it's time to die which i i had to have that line in, in my sequel um but like i feel like um even in the first one he got to talk a little bit with julie on the boat with all the yep. headlines all the articles and in this one he's just sort of there exactly mike he says that line but like wait i almost wanted julie to be like wait 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 can you tell me more about like why did you kill your wife like and why am i next to your family plot like do you view me as family like yeah you know, like it's i just feel like he or or maybe more maybe better would have been will as he's like kind of dragging julie out there you know and she before she cuts him maybe he's saying more about his mom or something Ooh. i just feel yeah. like don't don't come up with that and then like no one speaks about this family history at all I, I, like yeah yeah you know well i guess the i guess the the cool not even cool the yeah i guess cool thing about the whole like her f- seeing finding the plot there and it's raining it gives jennifer love hewitt a number screaming to the sky moment she got to have one in the first one yes and she, I, she, she, I was like wow they're going and, with the same thing again and she's getting and she's getting and she gets one in this one which is not as it's a little wordy uh but it you know yeah still it's still not so uh yeah it's not so right yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my grave stays empty yes and they try to make it all like dr- dramatic like what's today's yeah. date like july 4th like oh like, how do you not know it's the fourth of july like you know the date <laughs> <laughs> you were talking you've been talking about it for like a month at least at that point like, you know it's going to be that saturday or whatever no, day they've, the they've been talking about it the whole movie because <laughs> yeah, Ray exactly. wanted to go back to south part yes she's like no you know uh, but also <laughs> on the gravestone it doesn't say july it doesn't it just july say the 4th years, it just like, has years yeah, right it's just yeah so like <laughs> what is, yeah what does it matter what date is like we're just supposed to assume that today is like the day you're supposed to die you know so right. that's yeah. also funny i never caught that until this latest <laughs> rewatch i'm like wait i just see 19 like 77 to 1998 like don't worry about the date hon. like let's figure out what else is going on you know i also love how in both of those scenes like the one from the original and the sequel like it hinges entirely on uh 
the fisherman actually being in proximity to hear her yelling. To hear you her. Know, otherwise, she's just <laughs> yelling at nothing. At nothing. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. I don't think in either one you really know if he's there to hear it or not, do you? Right. Well, you That's know a what? Good point. I think I think the one the first one actually works. I mean, I I I put it in our like scary music intro for Tales of Horror because it is right. A, yes, a, yes. It is a fun like moment. Like for I mean, sure. It, it, oh, and yeah. it doesn't come off as cheesy as I mean. I think scary movie helped make it really cheesy and funny. Yes. Um, but the what this so this funny. one the second one I was like oh wow that's a little wordy and yeah not as uh, not as like he's definitely yeah. he's definitely there to hear it because he had just moved uh what was his name Max Johnny Galecki's body oh in the, the first car, one body right? from the trunk yeah so yeah. he's he's there like in the bushes oh, okay. like you know right. having a good time and so yeah but this this one I got the vibe he's not even really around. Well, well I don't think you can hear it because it's raining. It's loud. It's like thunder and lightning. It's screaming, <laughs> yeah. but you still can't hear it. I also like think it's great that there's an excuse for him to at least wear a slicker in the sequel because in the first oh. one, it's like Fourth of July. It's like the it's hottest day hot. of the year, probably. Good point. And then, every, and then everyone's wearing slickers in that one scene with Sarah Michelle Gellar, where she's like <laughs> seeing a bunch of fishermen. I was like, why are you guys yeah. all wearing slickers on the Fourth of July? Yeah, it's like the, probably the hottest day. Of where does the first one take place? Where, where is Southport? North Carolina. It, oh, North Carolina. Okay. They filmed that. it where they filmed like Dawson's Creek and stuff, right? Like that, that was like Kevin day. Williamson was, land for yeah. a long time. Oh, yeah. neat. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's a really good because, setting for that first movie, though. And if Julie is in Boston for like school, like that's a long drive for Ray to a <laughs> yeah. go no there, surprise her. <laughs> surprise her. You don't see him walking in through like the gate when she walks into her home. So he's like either been waiting there or just kind of like booze her. Right. And then, then he, the surprise of of like, oh, I'm gonna surprise her like tomorrow. Like, dude, you're yeah. you're driving like eight hours. So like, maybe maybe well, it's supposed to be like DC. Maybe it's not. I don't know why I thought it was Boston. I feel like maybe a it fan or the leaves. I it, look, no, I it, looks very, I it looks very Boston. It looks it looks very Boston. It yeah. looks very yeah. Boston. You do. So like yeah, he can't drive that in like just a few hours. And also, I thought that yeah. was funny because John Hawks is like, yeah, let's go up there, and I can stay with my friends in um oh, oh Cambridge. He's just like, yeah, Cam- just does he say Cambridge? He says, wow. my, yeah, yeah, yeah. He says my homies. He says my homies oh, yeah. in Cambridge. <laughs> That's what it is. Okay, and it's like wait. Guys, no, I, I thought, I'm like, wait, you have to surprise her in the Bahamas. You're not going up there to then fly out south. Like, what? Like, this is crazy. He's right? going to be so tired uh, when they land. Oh my God. You know? yeah. This does not uh, sound like a good we, vacation uh, for you. What do we think of Ray's journey to the Bahamas? Uh, Restful. <laughs> Can I just time. say... I am not a fan of that old woman that is judging him on the bus. Oh, I, I don't know her. why. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why we need that at all. But he's taking his pain meds. He looks like crap. And someone's mom, like you know, that's like the director's mom or someone's mom is there and she is just judging and staring. And I'm like, oh my God, lady, if you only knew what this guy's been through yeah. the last couple of years. Okay. Right. In the old websites, yeah. uh, uh, in the early days of like the horror movie internet sites, like I just remember there was all these theories about that woman being like Ben Willis's mother, and like for the <laughs> third one, she's gonna come back and be like, I remember Ray from the bus, you know, like on the way to the bah- the bus yeah. to the Bahamas. Yeah, right. there ha- there also has to be a reason why Freddie Prince Jr. was given so little to do. I, I want to assume you're just busy because like if you're coming back I'm from the guessing. first one like you're one of the leads of the first movie like it would seem to make sense that you be utilized a lot more um yeah even though i think of, i think of the four in that first movie he kind of gets the least amount of uh yeah. you know i won't say accolades but like people mention him less than like ryan philippi and sarah michelle geller and jennifer yeah. Hewitt. but like he was still a part of a hit movie and, and like it seemed like he would have more to do in the second one so i think it's weird that they they don't utilize him much at all uh yeah and it is weird he's just missing I lo- action i love when he um takes over that guy's boat when he's like really getting close <laughs> yeah. you know what well, i wrote down a quote he says um oh gosh what was it he says uh something like i'm not here for a weather report you know when the guy's like have you yeah. seen what it's like outside i'm like you tell him Ray, you know um but yeah i I wonder like i mean don't get me wrong it's super fun during the big climax just as like julie's gonna get it raised there you know but uh, yeah i wonder like (laughs) i i just wonder like what if ray got there even just a little bit earlier so that he could again be kind of part of the fun and some of the chasing and like you know or something or or i don't know it's 
Yeah, I, the only thing I can think of is he had to be busy with other projects by then because he was such a dreamboat. And it is funny, he's number two on the credits list right under yes. Jennifer Love Hewitt, <laughs> yeah, which makes is. sense. But like, again, he's like the last one of the group. Like I know? said, like, he is, he, like I said, Matthew Settle is not on that poster. I, they could have fit five faces, five heads. And you know what's funny? Poster. When I was like on the wiki page, um, I somehow like went down a rabbit hole of like old like Variety and Hollywood Reporter articles that are still online, like announcing the cast. And yeah. I think it was Variety said newcomer Matthew Settle gets the male lead of, you know, <laughs> oh. the, new, the sequel. So that's kind of how they were phrasing it, like in the trades years ago. So yeah, hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. that's crazy. And they, Trey <laughs> Pritchard still gets, oh, I, I'm not the male lead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like yeah. I was in the first one. Just like uh, in credit yeah. order only, right? In credit yeah. order only, yeah. I, I just think his whole journey to the bomb is, is ridiculous. I mean, I guess when I try to piece it together, like if it could work, he has to escape from the hospital, which is fine, yeah. I guess. And I don't know how long it would take him to get to uh, the Bahamas uh, and just in time to save her. If I overthink I it too much, it, it all falls apart. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I will say he holds his own in the fight for a little bit, um, mm. having yeah. been injured uh, and all that. Oh, um, the, the, the elbow. That, yeah, that elbow, that is, I have Save to say, in, in, at least within 90s horror, I think that elbow move is one of the coolest, most kind of surprising moves that like is still realistic it could still be done it's not like mm -hmm. you know he did like a crazy yeah. thing because that's what gets will killed by his own dad that's a good his own play. dad yeah, yeah that's actually a pretty fun moment i think yeah after, after all after all that um you know i i listened to the audio commentary of the movie because it's on the 4k i i actually oh, yeah. don't encourage you to listen to it because it's really bad the director oh. just like kind of either he either narrates scenes or he just goes dead silent like it's almost like you're watching oh. the real movie without him on it <laughs> oh, um, so he doesn't bad. so he doesn't really he doesn't really give a lot of insight but he did talk about the fight scene between matthew settle and freddie prince jr matthew settle had never done like stage combat or choreography like that so he actually really nailed freddie prince jr a few times like for real and, uh, and and like in the fight, and he was like, "Oh, I'm so sorry," because like they're, he was like, uh, and Freddie Prince Jr. I guess was a big a good sport about it. Um, I'd be interested to hear Freddie Prince Jr. talk about that movie now because he has his own podcast where he talks about horror movies. I love his he podcast, did, and he did yeah. discuss the first movie. I think that was like one yeah. of the, the first episode of the of it. And I would love to know like kind of what was going on when this was being yeah. shot. Yeah, because he, that, he said it was on a, his show. He hated working on the first one. First like, one, the direct he, the director did not like him. Major apparently. clash because because hmm. I think the director wanted Jeremy Sisto, but Kevin Williamson oh. and the producers wanted Freddie. Freddie, so, yeah, right. The director and Ooh. he and like um that whole big climax of the first one where like you know they're on the water and I think does Freddie get knocked off the boat and then has to climb back because on? of because yeah. of Julie uh, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> There's like, yeah. like he, he, it's a really interesting episode. Definitely check it out if you guys have time. He like says yeah, like he, there were like no like stunt rehearsals. Like he really was thrown into the water, like gasping for air. Like he was pissed. He was ready to quit. Like, you know, so I yeah, want, uh, if, I get the vibe that shooting this was more comfortable for him, but I also know he stated he's never, he still to this day apparently has never watched this. Movie he's never watched it. Yeah. yeah he's he's, he's had a bad reputation for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, his experience in that first movie is very negative. He said the director clearly didn't want him there. It's a bummer. And you can tell that he didn't want him at all. And uh, he was going to quit. And he said that Ryan Philippi actually convinced him to stay. He's like, no, like you got hired here for a reason. Like mm. you have to stay. So like, so, but yeah, his experience is much different from, I guess, everyone else's on it. Because they mm. all seem to talk about it positively now. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Jennifer Love Hewitt loved the original director, Jim Gillespie. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. She thought she only signed. Apparently, she signed up for the sequel because she thought he was coming back. And so yeah. when she find found out after she signed that he wasn't coming back, she was like bummed. Apparently, she's like, so, she's like who the fuck is Danny Cannon? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see that being upsetting too. Because yeah, they all like. I mean, that first movie was a big hit for them. I, it does suck when you learn those stories later. Like, oh, like mm. that was a horrible experience for you. Like, mm -hmm. oh. and then and then and then I remember on our episode talking about the movie, we made fun of the character a little bit and i was like oh like ray sucks kind of not 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 like that but now that yeah. i know that he had like a awful time on him like oh well, well damn that sucks yeah that's, i know carla's so good. hard on him in this movie she is like carla for no so real reason I, I feel like she Move doesn't on. even know ray yeah i feel like she met in my in my brain she met ray twice 
And we're just like, uh, no, I don't like Well, him. Uh, <laughs> I forget if, I don't know if we talked about this last year on your show, Gaius, or on my episode about the original movie, but do you guys think Carla is in the first movie? Because Julie has a black roommate. A black roommate. She does. She does. No. So, like, no, do you think that's someone else? And, like, because there are theories that that is someone else or that that's Carla, just they recast her with someone more famous, you know? What do you think, Mike? No? No, I mean, I just think it's just another girl, you know? Yeah. Yeah. She's got the black roommate lottery again. She's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I think Carla's yeah, trying I... hard on Ray because maybe Julie, like, won't stop talking. You know, she's yeah. traumatized by everything. And, you know, right. Carla's probably just like, just move on. Just uh, oh, that's, a, that's another thing I was confused about and still kind of. How, what did Julie actually tell Carla and her friends about? what happened because when she finally right. says everything when it's and they're kind of like oh like why did you tell me the whole story so like what did she tell them and what did she omit is it just that they never found his body and that was it or did she Ooh. not tell them about the yeah we hit a guy yeah. with our car and then we dumped his body <laughs> it's like really yeah, unclear right. about what they knew about what she just has that before. line she's like i'm your best friend and you didn't tell me that all of it you know but we don't know yeah. what part she actually knew yeah I would assume yeah. it's just that, like, yeah, a year ago, my friends and I were tormented and stalked by this killer. I assume that's <laughs> she what just, she would say. She just leaves that leaves the stuff out where they ran him over. <laughs> yeah, like the reasons yeah. why. You know, yeah. she's like, well, that's not really important. <laughs> but and again, I think a, here... <laughs> maybe a stronger writer, director, Scripture. stronger film, maybe <laughs> would actually like have um brandy's character maybe like turn her back a little bit on julie so that julie's then alone and like something scary mm. happens you know like that could have been interesting to be like wait i need like time to process this you never told yeah, me because she's only like, she's only she mad to cause she's this. only mad for that scene and then by the time you're the, the next scene it's like oh <laughs> yeah it's all forgiven uh but yeah i was just i was like wondering like what she omitted from her story to them because it's very uh, it's because it's clear that they know that she went through something because yeah. like you know she's but they don't really fully explain like what she exactly told him but, but i do kind of think that she might just admit it running him over <laughs> or they them running him over and then dumping yeah. his body which you know would be hard to tell your friends <laughs> on your new friends <laughs> by the way yeah. you should probably know this about me me uh um, <laughs> yeah but it's all good he came back he tried to kill us and then we killed him so we're we're really we're even you know, square. <laughs> we're square now oh man uh yeah are there any uh things that any final things you want to throw in about your time with the movie um can i ask two questions for the group yeah yeah um since the soundtrack 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 is <laughs> such a banger what's everyone's, what's everyone's favorite song and then on um, another question what's everyone's favorite death can we go around the room Ooh. Oh, okay because uh, there are so many deaths. Like there, I think I counted. There's like nine deaths in this one. In the first one, there's maybe. Four. And that's why. We, that's why we get like the hotel staff to just add to the body count. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I can appreciate there. the sequel for upping the body count, like you mentioned earlier. It's Mark. way, it's way gorier than the first movie. The first movie yeah. doesn't really have much gore at all. Right. Bar. Especially knowing they added the Johnny Galecki death, With like that was a reshoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um. Because I'll have probably the least amount to say, I'll just get my answers out of here first. Yeah. I don't think I can name any songs by name. I'm looking at the soundtrack right now. Um, none that's so that pick, pick the Jennifer Love Hewitt. Pick the Jennifer Love Hewitt song. You're good. What I was going to say <laughs> is the, the scariest scene in the movie for me is the karaoke scene. So I'll go with that as a least favorite. <laughs> okay. And favorite death is definitely Mackay Pfeiffer's. Um, it reminded Ooh. me definitely that that deep blue sea um, comparison is great. It also reminded me of a scene sort of like uh, in, in Wrong Turn 4, which I know is maybe a little obscure if you guys have seen that. Or not. There's, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a scene in Wrong 2 where someone kind of gets killed from out of nowhere and it made me think about that. Um, but I really liked how he went out at least. So um, mm. that would be it. But no, definitely for as far as the music goes, biggest scare came from Jennifer Love Hewitt being forced to do karaoke. That was That's not my thing. So I was very like you. That's the most girl. terrifying scene in the movie. Yes. Now, actually, well, no, okay. Can I ask? Because... You know, that scene gets a lot of hate, which 
totally oh, understand. I agree. Yes. It, doesn't, it doesn't make any I mean, sense the, either. The letters are even in red. Like it's red. So, yeah. they were white before, and now like so he's like and there then, behind the TV. Another, like, and then you know. never friends are looking at the screen at that moment. They're all laughing, right. looking away. Right. The <laughs> but again, it made me suspicious of Nancy. So I do appreciate that. Like, okay, some of these like staff workers, some someone's in on it, right? But um, do you think that moment? is real did ben or will somehow <laughs> oh, do that, that or is that another is that maybe the last thing that's in her head i feel like that one might be real mm. i want it to I be think... real okay <laughs> I, like, I, need I, it, I need it to be i got I want no it to input be real. <laughs> I, I want i actually want it to be in her head and i yeah. uh, that's a new decision that's like a new thing as of today I'm so like, you think that's oh, the you know last what? thing that is in her head before the real stuff <sighs> starts happening i want it to be but i don't know because she's actually having a good time and smiling and like nothing around the room like sets her off so mm -hmm. i actually yeah. do think it's real <laughs> but <laughs> i would i would like it to be in her head yeah. you know okay. um yeah but so yeah. So okay, that's that's Jackson's. Okay, what about Mike Gaius? What do you favorite like so, a song on the soundtrack and favorite death? Who wants to go? Uh, um, Mike, I'll go to you. Oh, thank you. Um, obviously, <laughs> How Do I Deal is a banger, um, <laughs> and the way it just comes, it's like the perfect like race, like strutting to it on the docks, and like it's just it's so it's a, I, and it's still on my um, Spotify. So I still oh, love that song. So but <clears throat> to but just for variety's sake. Um, I, and music snobs can make fun of me, but the here I go again on my own. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. The car. Uh, when they're it's a song, isn't it? You like, know, because I, I was like still like in fifth or sixth grade when I saw this movie, and I had never heard that song before. So whenever I hear that song, I like think of this oh, movie and the, how John Hawks can yeah. do it just like the singer. Yeah. They, were, uh, they were happy. To, they were happy to get the song too, because apparently I, th that was another thing from the commentary that they talked about was oh, that was a song that they both knew that they can yeah. sing along to. So that is what they chose to sing in that scene. They're like, well, we were lucky that we actually got the song because <laughs> otherwise yeah. that would have been really sure off. Yeah. And so, I made yeah. up my mind. Uh, <laughs> and then I think, you know, my favorite death, I mean, the Mackay Pfeiffer death is awesome. Um, and I love the shish kebab with Nancy and uh, Estes. But I yes. think the one that, that did scare me when I was younger at first was the hotel manager's discovering his, like, oh. the machete in the head. And then it's all yeah. written oh. on the... On the still know the, uh, That's a that great made, reveal. I forgot about yeah. that death. And, I, you know, he's, like, in the reanimator movies. And, mm. like, uh, yeah, that's right. that was a cool nod. And, I don't know, it's just, like, compared to, like, Scream and Urban Legend, because it's, you know, those are, like, the trifectas of the, the yeah. 90s bop horror movies. But, like, um, there's not, like, it just looked aggressive. And there weren't yeah. so many, I mean, most of the deaths in these movies are more like poppy, kind of like mm. fun or like they're off. They, you, you see the chop, but it's off screen, off screen. Mm, yeah. And so for me, like, you know, and just the, I love the shot of like the four characters kind of walking in and then Julie comes to the forefront. Yeah. It's just like, I'm in folk, you know, like, oh, this is happening yeah. to me, my wet hair, you know, like, mm -hmm. it's just, I love it. So <laughs> she's got some great looks. Like, I also love when she's doing her hair in the sink and then he walks by behind her and she like looks up and turns like i'm like oh jennifer she's Love a is, she's like, a really serving. good like horror movie actress so i think yeah. I, I maybe because she's only was in two of these that she mm. kind of doesn't get the uh the recognition of being like a pretty good final girl oh yeah. um, i read too that she didn't appear in any after this so that she wouldn't get typecast which yeah. i'm like maybe that's, that would have uh, been yeah. good for your career but <laughs> but she might do yeah. this new sequel that they announced oh, yeah, this they, year maybe oh you know they want to oh, do yeah. a, they, they they want to do a legacy sequel um called what do we know <laughs> well they already have i i'll, I'll always know well, always so which i was just so they can't use that. they can't use that i don't um, I remember they, i remember but it's very ooh, last summer, oh. add some more syllables <laughs> to it why not <laughs> it's because you know it's because scream did so well when they brought it back i don't know if this would do the same uh poor this uh, series tough. always living in screen shadow i know i know right <laughs> Yeah, uh, but yeah, this one no, would be tough to bring back. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I mean, my idea of bringing it back like had nothing to do with them, but actually brings back Anne H's character, but she passed away. So like, you can't even mm, like, great. you know, like it's tough. And also Ben is so old. So like, he's yeah, got to have an accomplice <laughs> or yeah. now there's just, yeah. So it's tricky, but I feel like a script was written, but then we haven't heard like a peep. So I don't or know. do you like, do you disregard? I still know. 
and just well, a lot of fans are like, like Carla's mm-hmm. got to be back. Oh, they want I, they want Carla. They do want Carla. They, they want Carla. Like, so you can... I, Brandy, I feel like yeah, on. you got to bring Brandy back. Well, then you right? make her the black roommate from the first movie. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's about it. Um, there you go. As far as songs, I can't remember the name of the song, but it's a song when they are on the way to the Bahamas. That whole montage yeah. of like on the yeah, plane. No, and, uh, don't you? Yeah, yeah know. there we go. It's not that even like complicated. Which yeah, I guess yeah. is by I guess it's very nineties. I watch this by Swirl oh, Three Sixty. Swirl Three Sixty. I, I thought yeah. that so the only reason. And the, and the only reason I Same only reason thing. I know it is because I'm looking at the soundtrack list and you just said that hey now I'm like yeah there it yeah. is right there yeah. <laughs> uh, I, and I also like the use of Orgy's cover of Blue Monday in the club oh, scene. Oh, like, yes. Like, yes, yes, yes. Um, I that would I I love the whole entire soundtrack and. There are so many good songs like Imogen I, Heaps and even the credits one, Gorecki by Lamb. I don't, I don't know. But like, I feel like that Blue Monday cover, I didn't even know it was a cover. Like, I was obsessed yeah. with that song because it was like kind of scary, but like a good beat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I and I actually, I actually both own both soundtracks. This is when I would just, mm, I, this is when I would yeah. buy anything related to these movies. Oh yeah, me too. For like, uh, <laughs> um, and I guess favorite death would be Mackay Pfeiffer's because it's surprising and I was ready for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, was, yeah. Was, it's almost was, uh, <laughs> cathartic at that point. Like, yeah, because he's like, again, just so he he is the Barry of the movie. Oh, if yeah. you have to compare him to like Ryan Philippi's character, yeah. like he's just so mad, and it's like it is because as he says before he's he dies, he's like he's tired. He's yeah. hungry and he's fucking horny. So like, there's lines. Why he's so mad? That's why he's so mad. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I also kind of wish Nancy didn't die. But uh, and even though she's not even in a lot of scenes, like really. But yeah. I like Jennifer Esposito's energy. She's the yeah. sad one. Yeah, and like like oh, we I, all are sad. You know, Helen doesn't make it. I feel like we're all kind of sad. Nancy doesn't make yeah. it either. You know. And um, while I don't love How Do I Deal, I do remember that period of. <sighs> I mean, I don't think it's a bad song, but I do remember that period of Jennifer Love Hewitt also having a singing career. And how oh, yeah. big a, a big deal that kind of was, and I do remember oh, yeah. the music video for it too. Um, and she was dating Carson the Daly at the time. So she was dating Carson. Yeah, it was on yeah. TRL, it was, and it was on, it was on TRL. It's very much a time capsule of its. And uh, that was what? definitely a bit of an age gap, if I remember correctly. Like she was around twenty, and he was like around thirty, and you know, yeah. that's like pretty different. Um, but no, I agree, uh, Gaius. I would say my favorite song, if I had to choose, was was the Orgy Blue Monday cover. Yeah. And then I totally agree with you all. That uh, Mechai Fight for Death is such a great surprise, and it's it's perfect. I would say my number two, just to throw out another one, I actually really uh, – it's freaky Jack Black's death because he is yeah. so funny and so yeah. heavy that when it's the hook good. goes into his hand, like yeah. he's actually like in pain and yeah. scared. And it's like, uh, it actually works. Cause it like turns it's yeah. intense. Oh yeah. He drops the whole stoner guy act for like a yes. second during that scene. Yeah, yeah. He's just like himself. Yes, and yeah, like yeah. he's sitting, he just happens to be sitting <clears throat> near all these tools. Well, I can't, I couldn't, yeah, I still can't figure out. Too. Does he, is he work a gardener? <laughs> yeah, is he the gardener or is he just like a bum that like squats there? Like, I, well, I could... he grows his own marijuana plant, so you know he has some sort of uh, <laughs> some skill yeah. with there. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah, that green house, so, yeah. yeah, that must be his his. Uh, yeah, he he works there, but um, yeah, like the all the tools. I just feel like again, that's like a fun slashery moment where like ben's just taking his time picking the tool and uh-huh. yeah that's that's pretty intense so i'd have to seriously just give that don't do second. that <laughs> yeah seriously don't do that yeah. it's all good yeah I, <laughs> sorry cut you off <laughs> I, no no i just think it's funny that the whole hotel staff has to die just so he can like empty out the resort <laughs> it's just not yeah. they even they didn't, even they didn't do anything keeper. Oh, really that house her her death is so yeah. sad. I know. Yeah, and, it's really really going on. and it's she rough. Yeah. And yeah. He, yeah. Like, splashes her face. Oh, Ooh, so yeah. she goes down hard. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. That's that's a tough one the for sure. But yeah, yeah the, those bloody sheets. All right. We always um we always give a score uh, for the movie. That's right. Um, at the end, I I have a feeling this is gonna be the lowest score Jackson has given to any of the movies we've done on here. Um, yeah, I, probably. <laughs> Do you want me to start with you? Sure. Yeah, just so I can get, and I don't want to like drag this movie down. We don't want to end it all with Jackson. What a exactly. bummer. <laughs> and, like, take it for the grain of salt. I didn't set myself up to have the best experience of this movie, not having seen the first. Like, take this doesn't mean anything. Uh, but like, it just in terms of my enjoyment, like while watching it, I, there were some funny moments that I was kind of like 
scratching my head at that kind of made it instead of being bored at least i was i had something to critique but like it was like a two out of ten for me but oh, uh, not that. meant for me in general so rewatch in 25 well. years you might like it better <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe sooner <laughs> For sure. Maybe I'll watch the first couple like back to back or something. Yeah. Oh, that might make you hate it more, man. I don't know. <laughs> Me, <laughs> that's so not different. a good sign. It's so different. From I do want to watch the first though. It's on my list and it being written by Kevin Williamson. So is, ha- have you big. never seen it? You don't think you've seen it at all? I don't think so. Like there's a oh chance I did God. growing up like on TV or something, but I can't probably, like yeah. co- confidently say so. Just, just, can you just do me a favor and just watch sure. it this week, please? Just sure. I'll drop, I'll, I'll drop, I'll drop, drop box it for me there, I'll drop box it to you. I gotta get that and like, Halloween ends in, Mark. So, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. in for a it's week. A, yeah. It, uh, it is a solid, I think, good murder mystery teen slasher oh, movie. And I think, and I think because Jim Galefsi a- approached it more as less of a horror film and more of like a thriller, it works a little bit better. But it also does feel like a nod to like movies like Prom Night in the 80s. Like it has that mm-hmm. kind of like, uh, vibe yeah. to it, and then all the actors are really good. And yeah, I also cool. I also think too, we always talk about it with the movies from that era. It is, I mean, it was a very fun time when it came out because that was the oh. second of those movies, and you didn't really know if like this is like was like scream a fluke or is like is this going to be fun? And then right. that it also was a bigger like not a, as big of a hit as scream, <laughs> but uh, a different kind of hit. It was a hit right out of the gate where it was number oh, yeah. one for three weeks, and like that's everyone was just talking about. It that movie not so much the second one uh it, op- it opened in second place after the second weekend of water boy so um, okay Ooh, the water yeah boy, yeah and it has oh, a it has a love a lovely seven percent on rotten tomato so you're two <sighs> you know it's not too it's not uh not too far off no no all right mike what's yours what's your score oh boy the team jackson <laughs> What what's no, a ten? I, I would, um. <laughs> You're like, how do I give it a ten? <laughs> how, how, no, I'm more like, how do I give it a good score? Yeah, basically, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, as far as like sequels, and then like just kind of knowing what you're getting, you know, like like I said before, like just by the title, you know, it's not gonna be like, you know, like Amadeus. I don't know, that was bad. But, like, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like I'm not going to the movie to pull out. But like um so I would say like on like slasher terms with like Friday thirteenth sequels, nightmare sequels, stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, I'd give it like an eight out of ten. Uh mm. because mm-hmm. I, I've only had a better time at, with every rewatch. Um it's hilarious to defend it. You know, we're talking about like the budget <laughs> yeah. that Ben Will uh that uh Ben Willis had uh for this vacation. <laughs> and I just think the he sold his boat. He sold the boat and it's <laughs> in the first movie. He has all this money for the it's a, just a weekend trip, you know, it's not that bad. Yeah. Right. Um yeah. and the, the kills are fun, the chase scenes are are great. There's many of them. The characters are easy to kind of remember by name, like Derek the Doc Hand guy. Like um <laughs> yep. I don't know. And I love I love movies like that like destination stuff where you're just stuck and then like it's raining, you know? Like mm-hmm. I, I love I love yeah. that kind of crap. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Eight out of ten. I'll take it to my to my Julie James grave. Uh <laughs> yep. Uh, we encourage we encourage the, the honesty uh that I yeah. So we're yeah. the best probably. Well thank you. <laughs> totally. All right, what about you, Mark? This is tough because <laughs> I I have to I have to rate it with my nostalgia brain. You know, I can't rate yeah. it and that's because that's that's why that's part of why I love it, right? That's why we like any movies, you know, from the past is like, you know, we have to kind of attach ourselves to it in our in our own lives. So I don't know if I'll give it an eight out of 10. It's so funny because when I was on IMDb today, you know how it pops up for you? Like, what do you want to rate this movie? Like sometimes it does yeah. that. Yeah. And I, think give I, it a gave it, I think, <laughs> you know, I said, no, I didn't give it a 10, but I think I, I but I'm, I'm very easy on movies. Like I, you know, I'm not like hypercritical. Like if it works in some way, great. So I think I at first thought, what should I give it? Like a six out of 10, but I was like, you know what? No, a seven. So yeah, I will stick to that. I'm going to give it a, a lucky number seven. I think a lot of it works. I think there are actually more things that work that then don't. And I just think those few things that don't just are like bigger things, you know, or like things you just can't ignore. Right. So, so yeah, I think it it's a beautiful looking sequel, both the location, the actors, and just 
the camera quality. I mean, so it gives me kind of everything I would need and hope for, you know, did it give me the journey that I expected? No. And maybe that's a great thing. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'll, I'll give it seven out of 10. I mean, I'll, there's okay. so many just fun, fun lines. I'm looking at the lines I wrote down, like, what are you going to do? Butter him when she like holds up a butter The hotel <laughs> manager. I love, I have to say one of my all time favorite lines is when uh, the hotel manager is giving them a hard time when they check in and he goes, comma and then the girls look at oh yeah comma. Comma. <laughs> like just dumb <laughs> like fun stuff so yeah yeah I'll, I'll i'll give it a seven how about you guys all right, I guess. All right so i looked up on imdb what i gave it and i must, i did this a long time ago i gave it a five when i first mm -hmm. rated it uh but this was probably years ago um i'm gonna go a little below you and give it a six and okay. wow Fair. and i i actually now, this, if this was me in 98, I think I probably would have been more upset about it, even <laughs> being that young, uh, that it wasn't as good as the first movie, because it really isn't. But I think you kind of feed on other people's enthusiasm for it when mm. they start to talk about, like, oh, well, this is what I enjoyed about it. So I would see that stuff even before the anniversary, like, oh, well, there are people that like it, like, really like it, mm. and then kind of look into what they liked about it. And I was like, all right, maybe I'm judging it too hard and mm. should enjoy it for what it is and if you enjoy it as like a kind of mindless slasher movie it is a lot of fun i like jackson you said earlier that you weren't really bored i mean it's still like right. entertaining for what it sure. is i mean like it's and i mean like i said i didn't have to watch it again for this because i had just watched it a, a month ago when i got the 4k and i was like i'll watch it again because i yeah it was a fun fun movie that to says a lot that says a lot um, about it and like like my friend said uh, earlier, like if you compare it to something like Friday Thirteenth Part Three or Four, like those are dumb movies too. But I still right. get some enjoyment out of watching them. So if and you there look are at some it like sequels that, that really suck. Like I just yeah, watched right. not that long ago the new Pet Cemetery one that just oh, came to Paramount. Oh, well, lies. Oh, it's like oh, boy. Oh, no. So you know you gotta when you compare it to other sequels, it's not as bad as some trash out there, right? Mm. Yeah. And I also, I mean, I know some people are going to listen to this, especially some friends are like, yo, you ran circles around trying to defend it in some way. I mean, I I agree. Like, you made the comment about the whole Amadeus thing. There are there are certain movies that are made for the purpose of just being what they are. And I think right. this is that movie. And it's yeah. fine. <clears throat> and I also agree with Mark, too. It's, shot, it's a beautiful looking movie, too. It's shot really well. I actually like the whole location on like, doing the whole bahamas thing i thought that was I love fun. it yeah too mm -hmm. um yeah i mean it, it will never hold that a candle it's not to raining. the first one for me though it's not raining when they oh. arrive and it's not raining at the <laughs> end when they survive it's just yeah, raining. <laughs> in the middle in the middle <laughs> a brutal uh, weekend <laughs> a very yeah. brutal weekend uh but yeah i i can see why people enjoy it and why they found something to enjoy about it i mean if you go on twitter today there's a bunch of people really defending it like really, really Good. defending it. It's kind of great. And to see. I don't know if she posted about it. I know she posted about. I know. I feel. Like I know you did last summer. Yeah. Year. But can I just quickly say before we all say goodnight that yeah. I tagged Jennifer Love Hewitt in a couple stories today, just like of the photos and stuff. And then I uh, had a story of my Ben Willis decoration from another uh, horror artist, I B Trav. If you guys know his work he's he's really great as well so i have oh, this yeah. ben willis hanging on my front door and i had just taken a picture saying he's still up for today's anniversary and jennifer love <sighs> hewitt i am not lying i will show no, i believe we believe you goes live. <laughs> when when this episode goes live i'm going to post the screenshot on my stories i'll tag you guys so listeners nice. you can come to really state rewind on instagram to see but she commented on the picture of the decoration saying, oh, my God, that's so cool. And I was like, oh, that's, nice. that's awesome. That's awesome. Oh, my God, you're so cool. <laughs> so I <laughs> always have loved her. I love her even more now. But, yeah, I feel like she also kind of, like, embraces these movies maybe now. I don't think she probably did, you know, soon yeah. after because, like we said, she wanted to distance herself, right? But She did, she did she something knows. for the 25th did... anniversary for the first movie. And then uh, even for the 26th one, she posted a story of like wearing a, a shirt she got on Etsy that was like, I know you did last summer shirt. Right, so she yeah. embraces it now. And then, uh, yeah, I, I didn't know if she was going to post anything for this particular one. But the fact that yeah. she responded to your thing is really cool. Right? Um, I was like, we, we, 
We've been lucky enough lately with some episodes. Like Ashley Lawrence commented on our Hellraiser uh, episode. Ooh, right, that was super cool. cool. I just saw yeah. her this weekend at uh, Monster Mania in uh, Pennsylvania. Nice. I saw. Oh, nice. And, uh, she was there. She and good. then one of the girl, one of the girls from Wolf Creek started following our uh, podcast Ooh, after yep. we dropped that Ooh, episode. Wolf and, Creek. and then we so had the. Good. I always forget the guy's name, but he was one of the the X-File guys and uh, can't really wait the, the heavier one with the glasses oh, with the big hair. Uh, yeah, he commented, he, he actually commented on our uh, stuff too for can't really wait. So oh, it's nice awesome. when, Neat. yeah. When, yeah. So it feels so surreal. Pretty, <laughs> that yeah, is a big yeah. one. That's pretty that cool. a big one. I was, I, I wrote back, Oh my God, JLH. <laughs> <laughs> JLH. <laughs> and, and I was like, well, let me, let me, I was like, Hey, yeah. Isn't that decoration? Great. Thank you. This is the, the designer go to his page. So it says scene. She didn't write back, but she saw it. So, <laughs> she saw hey, it. If, if I can bring Neat. a celeb to a, an artist, then great. You guys can converse. Cool. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah. All stars right. are well, just like um, us. Yeah, they're normal, but it's cool when they like. I mean, I get like, I mean, I love stuff like that. Like, I'm excited when certain people follow like G reels and stuff like that. Yeah, like Devin cool. Sawan, yeah. Devin, Devin Sawan, and I follow each other on Twitter. Oh, oh he's awesome. <laughs> awesome, and he's I really cool. That. And then Kyle Gallner is another one that like engages oh, yeah. like with like uh, too. So I rather oh, yeah. have like those interactions with like people who aren't like necessarily huge, but they're like huge to us because they oh, be, right. Like, oh, it's some the of these best. like products. Uh, yeah, Ke- Kevin it's Williamson cool. follows my account, and uh, he's oh, kind of no way. Yeah, I, I get, you, but he's commented on some of my Scream ones. He, um, this one I made of Marley Shelton from Scream Four. Yeah. Uh, he comment because the quote I put was like, "You were or uh, uh, Tiger Lily, I was just a lost boy." <clears throat> from that, and then he put in the comments like, "Fun fact." Um, I went to college with Sandra Bullock, and uh, she was Tiger Lily, and that's where that kind of came from. Oh, like my that. God. Oh, what? Awesome. I had no that's idea. Awesome. Wow. That's awesome. Hold on my page. Mike. <laughs> that is so cool. No, like, that is cool a big... Yeah. Sir Michelle Geller <laughs> shared my I Know You Last Summer poster this year, which was really what cool. Shit. Um, Fred Prince Jr. did mine yeah. on his uh, podcast thing. This so is why I cool. have no shame sometimes <laughs> in tagging some of these people. In the no, yeah, it's tag like, them. They like, never it's like, interact with Because it's, like, it's like, who knows what could happen? Yeah, like, yeah. 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 Rebecca pretty... Gayhart comments on my stuff. Like, oh, my it's God. Just, oh, and my you're, God. Oh, my God. I love Mike. I love your why? Why? You know? That's an important legend. We quote that every day. <laughs> oh my god so, I but no, it's just i think people like really appreciate it and especially like the 90s like actors and everything because they're all the conventions yeah. now like um oh, yeah. and that's why we were so surprised about like nev campbell not coming back uh for a scream six because like she during all that time where she could put out that statement she was still at the conventions yeah and so part yeah. like me, when me she and my was... husband went to see the movie we're like is she really is she, she's got it she may she might surprise right. us I, I i think i think pretty much up into me seeing it on opening night i thought possibly they might surprise they us were with having surprise. Her yeah. and yeah. and uh I mean, they still think that she might be up for Screen 7. She did mention, yeah, uh, I guess, over the weekend that she yeah. saw Screen 6 and, for the first yeah. time two weeks ago. Yeah, and I was there. What, and well, they, well, well, one person commented. I saw someone person comment. They were like, she had seen it in theaters. Blah, 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 blah. It was like a big like, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> like, no, yeah, I, I was there for her panel because I, I was visiting my family not far from where Monster Mania was happening. So I was like, okay, uh, we basically have to drive an hour and go. And <laughs> she is even cooler than we could have expected. I mean, I this was my first time finally seeing her in a in a panel. And I mean, she already, I've loved her for years, but she was honest. She was very open and honest and saying like, hey, I'll come back if they pay me. But, you know, until then, like, you know, and she did say like, I finally did see Scream 6. And she made a joke. She's like, I don't know what took me so long, you know. <laughs> but the crowd yeah. was like so supportive. And she was telling, I mean, a lot of kids had questions for her, which was really cool to see. And she was very patient and listened to all of them. And she would say like, you rock. And it was, I I haven't gone to many panels like that, but um, it was one of the only ones I've ever seen where at the end she said, like, as they're like, okay, well, thanks everybody. That's it. She then got back on the mic and said like, hey, before everyone goes, I just want to say, I love you all. Thank you all so much. Like she's she's really cool. Yeah. Mm. And she did say, Mm. the one really interesting thing she said was she doesn't like to critique scripts that she works on, but she does not like that Dewey died. She seemed like serious. She's like, I don't think that was a good idea to kill David's character. Meanwhile, I think someone had to go 
Yeah, it had to be one of them. One hundred percent. Yeah. yeah it, can't, it can't be. It can't be Herbert Gale. So definitely do it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> do not never kill Gale. I love no. Gale so much. <laughs> yes. I love her. I. I Jack, up. Jack's is like uh, somebody should have died in that movie. Somebody. Like, yeah. We need another one. Gale survived should've, a lot. Yeah. Someone should have well, died in oh. six for sure. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, those twins just survive everything. I mean, come on. But anyway, that's yeah. a topic for another <laughs> day, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly. Uh, before we wrap things up, though, uh, uh, Mark, if you want to tell us a little bit uh, about release date, we might know you have before on the show, but I wanted to give you a chance to talk Thanks, about it a yeah. little bit more. And, and if you have anything coming up that you are excited Thank about. Thank you. Yeah, I got I got to get all three of you on the show sometime soon, maybe next year. But um, yeah, release date rewind. It's a podcast similar to to this. What you guys are doing, where um, I talk about uh, with different friends, different people I meet online as well, different fans. Um, great movies that we love from the past. So my next episodes for November are Adam's Family Values and Mrs. Mark. Doubtfire. So oh, that'll be awesome. nice 1993, 30 year old <clears throat> movies to talk about so yeah and then you can um see a, a, a lot of my indie horror shorts are uh, on various platforms on youtube prime uh vimeo reverie all different things so you can look cool. me up at, at mjp underscore pov that's my uh production company so that's me. nice nice and then mike uh, remind us again uh your instagram i mean i'm gonna post it and everything but uh well, thank so you. people can find some stuff yeah, it's well, my last name is Newquist, so it's Nuke Cartoons, N E W Q Cartoons. Just do lots of throwback 90s stuff, a bunch of horror movies, whatever feels topical at the time. Yeah. And uh, nice. yeah, give it a follow. I'm fun, and I post a lot of my dog in my stories, and she's a girl. <laughs> oh, well, so oh, her name so is So everyone follow that. <laughs> oh, nice. I love that. Um, anyway. So yeah, I, yeah, I'm glad that uh, you were able to be on with us, and we yeah, always thanks like for having, having me. new people. And honestly, once uh, someone comes on and they're guests and they're awesome after their first time, we are always encouraged to come back. Um, Absolutely. It, it, uh, I'm sure now we kind of know like what your wheelhouse is too. So I'm like, hey, like if you want to join in for this conversation, like you're more yeah. than welcome to come back. Mark knows for sure. After the I mean, after the first time Mark was on, I was like, that guy has to be on a oh, lot. I was going to try to make it as, as yeah. often as I can. Oh, Mark, yeah. I think this is the third time you've been on with me as a co-host. And it's yeah. always great to have you yeah. on for yeah. discussion. Oh, totally. Yeah. It's so great chatting yeah. with you guys. Thank you for, yeah, because we've done H2O, Can't Hardly Wait, Gaius, we did, yeah, I know, we, and Scream, scream 5, two. 6. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. We got a lot. yeah. So maybe the faculty, or I'm sure we got even more next year, Blair Witch. Yeah, we, we got we got Ooh, the faculty in December. I know, yes, we do. Um, I know that if November stays light and it's not too busy, I'm gonna try to fit in sleepaway camp. So that's another uh, oh, fun. option for no okay, another option nice. for November. Uh, it just depends on how November kind of goes. With I mean, everything's kind of back now, so we'll yeah. see. But I really would love to revisit that because I haven't watched it in a really long time, and it's got some really good plot points to discuss. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, but yeah, uh, and I also like when like you're like you're not gonna do one on yours, or like hey, like. I'm not going to do one on mine, but I'm open to be on yours if you want to talk right. about it. So yeah. you have a good, like, kind of swap thing going oh, totally. on. Totally. We're like, just in case. we're like, I don't know, brother podcast, sister <laughs> podcast. <laughs> yeah, pr know. pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all, right, all right, Jackson. Uh, you got through this. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for uh, putting up with me. I've been a little sleepy. That's kind of why I've been a little silent on top of just not having enjoyed. I enjoy the conversation that comes out of watching these things. So thank you guys both for joining us on back to the blockbuster today you guys uh were here with us for episode 132 it's been a blast as always guys make sure you guys go check out mike and mark j parker on instagram at uh their respective handles and those will be tagged below the episode too like gaius mentioned thanks a lot for joining us guys on i still know what you did last summer let us know what you think about the episode and of course find us anywhere you guys get your podcasts and on social media at back to the blockbuster thanks a lot guys thanks for joining us mike and mark we'll catch you next time <laughs> Peace. Peace out, guys. Bye. Oh, that was great.